year. When your results are notable beyond argument, notable beyond sentiment, he said, by so doing, you will prove that you are my disciples. You will prove that you have sat down under my mentorship and tutelage. Your results validate the efficacy of the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit. When our lives are barren of certain dimensions of results, it's an indictment on the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Results that defy background. Results that defy the expectations of naysayers and men and women who look forward to your failure as their self-fulfilling prophecy. But you must contend for it. Hallelujah. I've been thinking, you know, I've been thinking about you all through the week. My mind has just been blown. There are dimensions that we must enter before the end of this year. The word of God will not go void. When God speaks, it is within his power to make it happen. Are we together? But it is always been a partnership. It's always been that way. That the heavens must partner with the earth for realities to be established here. And so, my assignment is to scan through and make sure that we tie every loose end that can force or that can, can sabotage this prophecy from finding expression. My job is to search and find out and to remind us and indoctrinate us with the truths that are capable of bringing results. Results that are predictable. Results that are consistent. Results that have nothing to do with the wishes of men. Hearing is our Father glorified. Hearing. If you have ever wondered how God takes glory from men, this is how it happens. When you bear much fruit, much fruit, much fruit, not little fruit, much fruit. When results become um, become notable, notable and consistent, it will compel any force of darkness, regardless of sentiment, to know that the hand of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Every dimension in the spirit has a price. Every level, every dimension of greatness has a price. By the grace of God, He has granted us this privilege as a ministry to laboriously open God's people to the demands, the price requirement, the cost dimension of certain results that we need. I am passionate about connecting people's desires to the formula and the principles that have been designed for those outcomes to manifest. It is one thing, if you can tell me what you want, if you can tell me what you desire, I can show you the mystery that is allocated for that result. There is a price. I wish everything were, would just happen without your cooperation. But that's not the way the system of God works. There is a price. The price we are talking about is the price of alignment. The price of partnership. Because you see, the operation of the system of the kingdom as we have learned is such that it comes by grace but it says through faith they are not the same thing by grace made available through faith the summation of your partnership that causes that reality that is available grace makes it available it creates the possibility but your engaging the word accordingly makes it your experience. Grace does not make it your experience. 
grace opens it up it lets you know that this is a possibility contained in God I've shared it with you that the grace of God is not redemption no redemption is a subset of God's grace God's grace is a generic description of any and everything that only God can provide it's called his grace So the anointing is God's grace. His mercy is a dimension of His grace. His love is a dimension of His grace. Any possibility that should be the experience of men that can only be provided for by God is His grace. Grace never makes it your experience. It creates the potential for redemption, for healing, for blessing, for increase for multiplication but then it takes faith and most people have thought that the only aspect of faith is to believe and confess no sir no that's only an aspect of faith faith is a generic name given to everything that involves the partnership of man the first key to partnership is finding out the formula God has provided for receiving that miracle. Understanding it by the help of the Spirit. And then taking relevant steps in accordance to what He has said. This is what the Bible calls faith. Believing is only an aspect of faith. Confessing is only an aspect of faith. That's not all there is faith. If you stop there, you will be in total shock. You can believe that prosperity is your heritage you can confess it is your heritage and stop and don't engage the other forces and you will remain in poverty and penury forever you can believe in God's desire for you to be great listen carefully you can confess that it is God's desire for you to be great and not engage the other forces of greatness value, relationships, skill and find out you never ask are we together now? Yes. So when we learn the systems of the kingdom, we are bringing ourselves to the point of faith where we are able to act with understanding and intelligence. It is only when our obedience is complete that we commit God's integrity and then He is compelled to make it happen. This is how angels work. Angels don't work at random. Angels signify things. Revelations 1 verse 1, the Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto his servant John. He said, and he sent it and signified it by his angel. Angels act in accordance to understanding. Their actions accredit that you are doing something right. So they don't just act at random just because they are here. No. There is what to do that engages them because they are governed, they are supervised by the Holy Spirit. It is the office of the Holy Spirit that supervises the operation of angels. They don't just move anyhow and do everything. That your eyes are open in the realm of the Spirit and you see them near you is no guarantee they will rescue you. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? So we must find out the things that we need to understand to help us excel. Brothers and sisters, God sees my heart and how much passion that I have to see every one of us rise. I will share with us a few things. Most of them recaps so that we re-evaluate whether we have been practicing these things and then we pray. Are you ready? The first price for doing business with God and making any name and anything that is sustainable on earth, please write it down. If there is a title for this thing, I will call it the price. Wherever we stop, I'm, I'm re- we are going back to the laws, the systems of the kingdom. There is no other way to get results than a comprehension, a working knowledge, an understanding of the systems of the kingdom alongside how we are to engage them. This is how results are produced. The first price 
is the price of intimacy. The price of intimacy. The price of intimacy. Make it back in the sands of time. God's way. If you are unwilling to pay the price to know God, the price of intimacy is not the price of praying in tongues. It's not just the price of fasting. It's the price to know God. The price to know God. The price to know God. Write it down. The price of intimacy is the requirement that causes a man to have a relationship with God. Daniel 11 verse 32. It says, but the people that do know, know, the word know there, you've heard me say it again and again, it's not just the word aware, that you are aware God exists, does not mean you know him. Are we together now? Pastor Alpha knows me. Pastor Femi knows me. Correct? Promise knows me, Kenny, they know me, but I'm not sure any of them know me as much as a Jimmy. Why? Because we have spent more time. There are many things that have brought us closer. And every one of them can only enjoy their confidence about me is based on their knowledge. Please listen. The foundation for your confidence in the kingdom is not just gold face for nothing. It is the knowledge of God. The Bible says, it says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not, um, how did he put it now? Let not, let not the strong man glory in his strength. But it says, let him that glory and glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth. The foundation, as I'm saying it now, please, I want you to check your life. There are many hustlers in life. They like money, but they hate God. They like what God can give, but they hate Him. They like church. They love miracles. They love anointing. They love signs and wonders, but they hate God. They like seed sowing and harvest, but they hate God. Please come, Pastor Alpha. Let me tell you something. I can come to your house and light your bed. Your bed is not you. Correct? I can light your kitchen. I can light your food. I can light your suit. I can light your tie. Huh? I can light your children. I can light your car. All those things are related to you, but they are not you. Anointing is not God. Miracles is not God. Hear me, oh. Breakthrough is not God. Fasting is not God. Prayer is not God. Bible study is not God. God is the person who can be known. You can hang around activities that are related to Him and convince yourself that because you have actively participated in activities that relate to God, it means you know Him. This is the pride of African men. We claim I was born in so 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 time this baptistry we were the ones who dedicated it the first communicants we are the ones who laid hands on them when Reinhard Bonke came we were the ones who set the canopy and we add all those spiritual accolades to equal knowing God no sir no sir no sir knowing the things of God and knowing God are two different things the Bible never said but the people who come to church. It never said but the people who drop their tithes and offering. It never said the people who are ordained into ministry. Please listen carefully. We are examining the foundation for our results. You learn principles without an encounter with God. You are just learning jargons. As powerful as principles are, principles are a derivative of a relationship with a person. Are we together now? Yes. 
You can know about me by reading my books, but you know me by meeting me. My book is supposed to create an appetite for encounter. Here's what the Bible says. It says, you search the scriptures. You search the scriptures because you think in them by themselves you will find life. He said those scriptures testify of me. That means reading the Bible should stimulate you to want to meet a person. Much more than opening the Bible. So their books can be opened and you can read. Scientology and all kinds of books can be opened. But if your reading the book does not translate to meeting a person, you will never be great in life. But the people that do know their God, show me a man who is willing to go through the price of intimacy. I don't care whether he went to school or not. I don't care whether he came from what background. Show me a man, he may be an orphan. Oh goodness. What relationship with the Holy Spirit can bring to a man? Brothers and sisters, he can pick a weak person. A weak person. A weak lady. No father, no mother. No opportunity for a great life. But that you are stupid enough to say, Spirit of the living God, you represent the presence of Jesus. I am willing. I am willing. Like a little child will run to the Father. I'm clueless about my life and destiny. I don't know where I'm coming from. I don't know where I'm going to. I don't have an idea of what life is about. But all I want is you. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you. Listen. Life will challenge your knowledge of God. You can know God as a theory. One day, the reason why many believers give up, just like some of you now, let me tell you, the mystery of tiredness and living God is because there was no encounter in the first place. Let's be careful the kind of believers we are producing in church. I know when I talk like this, people think I'm just being sarcastic. No, I love the body of Christ. But we need to re-examine the quality of the harvest we are bringing. Because we are bringing believers who don't know God. They don't care about God. They have zero passion for the things of God. They will tell you, I'm not called into ministry. God has called me into business. In other words, give all that one to the business people. Whoever told you knowing God was for pastors? Whoever told you knowing God was for men of God and their wives and their children? But the people that do know their God, you want a harvest of strength, you want a life of exploits and triumph, the first prize is to know God. I can pray for you, but I can't know God for you. You can benefit from my relationship. But brothers and sisters, everybody will stand before that Red Sea. Whether you are married, when you get to the Red Sea, Pastor, you will stand there and your wife will stand before her Red Sea. It is her faith that will bring her victory. You can't intercede for people indefinitely forever. No, sir. Are we together? But the people who do know their God, I talk to pastors and they tell me, Apostle, how do you manage criticism? How do, do you manage this? You know, people who like me don't, no longer like me. And I look at them and say, oh dear. You are all, just like a patient comes to tell the doctor and says, look, I've been purging, I've been coughing. And while he's talking, the doctor is seeing symptoms of cholera. Are you seeing that now? That's the same way. Do you know most of our lamentations are a window into something that is wrong? Most likely, we don't know God. That's why you can say, Father, I, I thank you. I know you will bless me. But Lord, if you don't bless me, anything I do, oh, that's your cup of tea. That kind of talk is a revelation that there is no encounter. Because when you know God, He infects you like a virus. You come to a point where you say, Lord, 
seeking you for results is over forever. I seek you first for who you are. Results or no results, I'm stuck with you. I'm stuck with you. It's a salt covenant. I'm stuck with you forever. Are we together? Everybody say the price of intimacy. Say it. Say the price of intimacy. Can you boldly stand? Please, I want you to listen to my message knowing God experientially. It's a powerful message. Knowing God experientially teaches you the system of knowing God. Let me tell you how God causes men to know Him. He introduces Himself to people and His dimensions in the presence of their challenges and predicaments. Only challenges can help men know God. There's no other way to know Him. The names of God scattered in the Bible were a revelation of Him in the presence of certain challenges. Most people know God as healer just because they saw Benny him pray or they came for miracle studies. But the day you stand face to face with a doctor's report that says, Look, madam, um, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's not like you may not give birth, you cannot give birth. We have done the scan and we realize that you don't even have a womb. He said, sorry, come again. Say, look, I'm a consultant, so you are not talking to a stupid person. There is no word. At that point, you go back and say, God, is this not your word? Let me tell you what it will do to you. Challenges shake us up all of a sudden and make God serious. You know that there is a way you can be trivializing God, but then certain challenges just shake you. Ordinarily, you will not wake up by 2 a.m. in the night, but the reality of what has confronted you forces you to wake up. You don't need alarm clock, you don't need Lipton, you don't need coffee. The pressure. And all of a sudden you pray. Let me tell you something. After nine months, when you hold that child, you are not holding a child, you are holding a testimony. Other people are dancing over a child, you are dancing over a testimony. So the day they prophesy and say, May the God that can open up a door in one year open your door other people are saying amen the moment let me tell you how you receive things in the spirit yes you receive by faith but your past experiences with god help you to receive the new things he's bringing god looks for something he has done in your life before and connects it to what you are trusting him for are we together when david was fighting goliath remember he drew from the archives of god's faithfulness do you have a name you have given God based on something only you and Him know? Or are you just reciting the names that you read in the Bible? Rafa, Chire, Pastor, there is a name you call your wife. It's none of my business. It's none of our business. That is a product of intimacy. There is a name you call somebody when you are angry. There is a name you call somebody when the times are good. There is a even as friends. What is the name of God that is a product of your knowing Him? What name did you give Him? Is there a secret name that every time you call, God says, I know this voice? <laughs> no one else calls me this name. When Pastor Alpha's wife hears him calling that name, he can't mistake it. He can't mistake it for me. Even if I know the name, it won't sound like that. There is a mystery behind the name. There is a way when people in the Bible said Rafa, there were too many stories that came to their mind. But today you say Rafa, your mind is blank. No experience to connect to Rafa. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, as Abraham. Abraham knows Jehovah Jireh. But we think it's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. And we jump around and there is no revelation that connects them. That's why Africa has resorted to calling him names in their languages because they found out that it, it, has, it can help. When that gentleman was calling whatever he was saying, I was happy because he was not just reciting a poem, a name that relates to your pain. You don't survive an accident and call God Jireh. You call him the deliverer. 
the deliverer. So when somebody sees you say, how? Oh, the deliverer is here. They say, ah, in a prosperity convention, say, Mr. Man, it's the dimension of God that was revealed to me that I keep calling you. What is the name? What is the name? We've had our fathers call God names that were strange to us. We copied it. But it's time for us to have a genuine encounter. Genuine encounter. The price of intimacy. Koinonia, please listen to me. No level of business acumen, no level of education can cover the gap that intimacy was meant to cover. But the people that do know their God, if you are a pastor, please don't do ministry without knowing God. You will die like it. You will sit down one day on the stage and start crying. And the people ask you what is going to say, I don't know. The price of intimacy. There are certain things about intimacy I want us to understand. Number one, please, I'm taking our time to just, I want us to understand this thing. Intimacy takes time. You cannot know a man a woman you are willing to spend time with no sir intimacy is a product of time you don't give god five minutes and get belly his encounter please god is not that cheap my brother my sister listen to me you need to spend time he must mean a lot to you number two god must become priority to have intimacy with you the Bible says, don't cast your pearl before swine. I've said it. You don't come to someone's house and then he takes you to his bedroom. Shows you where he keeps money. No, sir. When you come, sometimes you will even stand at the gate. Sometimes you will enter and stay inside. Sometimes you will stay at the parlor. You will not even have access to the kitchen. But there are certain people, while all that is happening, the child can run and even enter the bedroom. The price for intimacy. I look at the lives of people, believers. Yes, we are born again. Yes, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. But when I look at our lives, I don't see priority. Passion for God is contagious. When a brother likes a lady, no matter how he tries to hide it, the roommate will know. Is that true? The roommate will say, you just spoke to five people, but this sixth person, the joy at which you used to call that lady, this joy is not natural. Correct? You are hugging everybody after service. And then the way you hug that lady, the brother says, this hug is too generous for just brotherly kindness. No. What is, there's more to this. I say, you have been looking at her. Passion has a presence. Don't lie to us that you love God when we cannot see the passion. Passion has a presence. I hunger and thirst for you. You try and live in all I want. Hunger and thirst for you. I hunger and thirst for you. Why am I weary now? All I want. The third key I'm sharing with you for intimacy to be established. One is you must be ready to invest your time. You give God five minutes of your time, you get five minutes worth of knowledge. Second is priority. Third is your willingness to lay down. The, the Bible calls it the power to lay down. This is where some of you will not like me now. This is where many believers will not like me now. Because our generation has been indoctrinated that you can eat your cake and have it. No, sir. Go and ask anybody, even an occultist, you don't eat your cake and have it. You cannot know God 
without a sacrifice. I'm not talking money. A sacrifice. Fasting is a sacrifice. Prayer is a sacrifice. Are we together? Studying the Bible is a sacrifice. We don't like this language at all. Yes, we want power. We want results. Sacrifice. There are times that on account of your intimacy with God, you just want to eat and the word of the Lord comes to you. Go on a three-day fast. Oh God, which breakthrough is coming now? God said, this is not a sure breakthrough. You are about, I'm about to reveal, I'm about to open you up to certain encounters. And I said, God, this is not flamboyant enough. If that you told me that I, after these three days fast, land will manifest from anywhere and come, it's a worthy investment to pass but wh why will I fast to know you what is the big deal about you when I'm looking for land I'm going to say you see it you see your heart everybody says sacrifice I am amazed at the difficulty that believers go through to lay down the slightest thing slightest thing so this suit you discuss with God for one year before it leaves. You are carnal and you don't love Him. It's the truth. Empty your account. I cost that that devil. You argue for two years first. I finish the money till ten thousand. I say, God, I will lay it down. God says, just leave. I will tell you where to do it again. Are you willing to lay down? Jesus said, I have the power to lay down. Let me show you maturity in the spirit. When a man has gotten to a point where there is nothing you cannot lay down. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Many of us will agree to fast for 400 days than to lay down something for him. Everybody say sacrifice. When God makes that demand that you are willing to sacrifice, you will know Him. Let me tell you, I submit to you without humility. This man standing before you is a testimony of sacrifice. Ask God, there is nothing I cannot lay down for you. No, it's a joke. Before he finishes talking to God, I have exercised myself to see the vanity of anything outside of God. Bible says, love not the world. Usually it is those who hate money that preach that message. No. It's all those who are poor and broke. They preach it as a consolation to their poverty. No, sir. You should not preach that message until you are really rich. Love not the world or the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, if this they don't have those things, an affinity to it. God gave you a car and the car took his place. God gave you a wife, and the wife took his place. God gave you children, they took his place. God gave you a, a job paying six figures, and he lost you in that job. Is God speaking to someone here? God increased your GPA, and that's the end of it. God connected you to a good brother, a good sister. God gave you a business idea, and with that idea, he lost you. No, sir. No, sir. Sacrifice. The Lord, for as long as I live in life and in death, will remain my priority. And that if need be, I will lay aside them anything. If God tells me, lay aside koinonia now, brothers and sisters, if with tears we hold the last valedictory service, I will hold the last service. I don't care what prophet comes from where and says, Apostle, I think you are not hearing God well. I will apologize when God changes his mind, but for now, koinonia closed. Apostle, what do you do with the life you are blessing? I don't know. Ask the one who sent me, but koinonia closed. There is a way you can do ministry. You have carried your reputation and your life and added to it. When God says, shift left, God says, then leave the way. Are we together? I want you to look at your life now. Let me show you why money is not coming to your life. Leave, leave business. We are coming here. But we are examining why there are some of us, regardless of our prayer, Satan enters our life anyhow. Do you know why? 
because the lust in your heart needs to be pushed beyond imagination. Your attachment to things, you God would dare not make a demand of anything. What sort of thing is that? Who gave you the life? Many of you would have noticed that from August, August till now, I'm not sure I've gone from over four ministrations. Cancelled almost everything. It's just been maybe one or two ministrations per month and the rest. Very unusual. Because that's the instruction God gave. And I said that's it. Let me tell you, there are certain people that I would have wanted to be in their meetings with all my heart. But I love God. There's nothing I know that moves the heart of God that gives still something you ordinarily love. But you say, Lord, it is for you. He says, that's it. This is what I'm looking for. If this handkerchief is five naira, and I tell you I brought this handkerchief from the UK, are we together? I bought it, whatever amount, one pound, and I carried it from the UK, and I brought it. They wanted to collect it, but I hid it back. Immigration wanted to harass me, but I said, this is for you. If I give you, will you give somebody for 1,000? It's not about the sacrifice have increased the value of it. There is no rising in the spirit when you are holding on to everything. Jealousy, anger, huh? all kinds of things. Please, let's re-examine these things. If we really want results, God declared that it's the year of triumph. But it's your heart with you. It's your heart with you. Apostle, all I want is just pray for me. Let the husband come. Keep quiet, your sister. And listen to what I'm telling you because it's not just the issue of praying for husband. God has already seen the wickedness in your heart and God is saying, no way. You must love me first before I carry my son that I've labored on to carry and give him. Oh God, just bless me. I need to be a millionaire. I've seen this thing in my dream and God said, if you don't listen to my servant, you will need to remain in the dream. It takes hunger for God. How many people have made money and left God? Have you seen people like that? Anybody that says money does not give you an option to stay poor and a broke person who doesn't know anything about money. Because when you have money, there are few things you will pray about. Correct? Many prayer requests are tied to finances. And let me be honest with you, there is a level in your life that you get to where you don't think about money again. You may not have everything, but you get to a point where all your basic needs can be met to the degree you want them to be met. At that point, that's how you see how carnal and mundane your heart is. Because there's nothing else. I understand praying for six hours because of the emergency that is on you. But when His Majesty has lifted your life beyond certain realms, that's when you will know and prove whether He's really Lord in your life. My number one prayer to God every time is of God for as long as I live. May nothing win my heart so much enough to be able to push you and say God wait behind just because a door of ministry was open wait behind oh God Benny he is calling me wait behind Billy Graham gave me the privilege to see him before he dies wait behind Bill Gates just called me and he said he wants to bless the man of God on earth and favor located me no sir Lord, make me your priority. Make me your priority. Make me your priority. This was the secret of David. Make me your priority. Priority means you mean the world to me. You mean the world to me. Brothers and sisters, get my passion for God. I pray that God will, will whatever it is that God did to me, I pray that it will happen to you. Because if truly speaking, you want to do business with God, you must love Him beyond things. Things. Beyond things. I love Him with all my heart. My heart is open before Him. He's the God of my salvation. I love Him with all my heart. I will lay down anything for Him. Anything. 
anything. I really mean it. I really mean it. Don't think I'm just talking. I fear God. I will lay down anything. Reputation nonsense. If you can lay down anything in this presence and go down on your knees and say, Lord, this is for you. I lay down my pride. I lay down my achievement. Oh, I have a PFC, so, 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 and so. Just come down first. Oh. Lord, I hand it over to you. There's nothing God loves like surrender. 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 It's yours. That's a language that is music to his ears. The anointing Lord you gave me is yours. The grace you gave me is yours. And while people are clapping for you in the open, Apostle Joshua Selman, you come before him and say, Lord, without you I can go nowhere. Tap Apostle, tell the truth. As anointed as you are, without you. The wife of David looked at him and said, You are dancing, you are you are you are misrepresenting yourself. You don't know you are a king before God. And he said, Me, you don't know my track record with this God. I've told God one day to me leaving you. Please, if it means me taking my life, let it be that I didn't finish my assignment, but that you remain my priority. I surrender all. Everything I give to you. I'm with holy suffering. Listen to the song before you sing it. Lord, I surrender to you. Everything I give to you. I'm with holy suffering. The key to dying, killing your reputation, and the, the key to entering your rest is to hand over your life to God. I don't have any reputation of no brothers and sisters. My reputation is God. You know, there are times that sometimes I chat with the media people and they tell me, you know, someone, all these people that write all kinds of things, sometimes they send mails, sometimes sarcasm, people say all kinds of things. I say, Apostle, your reputation, and I laugh, as ah, reputation died since when. Well. If I had a reputation of my own, wouldn't I be under pressure right now? Let me tell you what is causing stress. The fight to protect our reputation. That's it. So that people will not think I'm poor. Let me prove a point. And God is saying, what point? Come on to me. Come on to me. I need people to know that me, I'm not, I'm not just a, I'm not, I'm not a poor man. I, I need to go and buy a trouser and God says, no, I am your reputation. I am your inheritance. Listen, let me teach you people the secret of rest. There are many pastors wearing themselves out. I need crowd so that they will know that me too am anointed. If, if a man can receive nothing except it is given to him. I learn to rest in him. He truly is my rest. That's why the ministry has been designed in such a way that whether I'm here or not, God will be glorified. It can't be around me. No, sir. If I die now, God forbid, ah yes, you will just cry for seven days. You will try to put and raise me back to life maybe two or three days. After three days, I guarantee you will be tired at school. And you just say, Tom, what do we do? They say, Let's just give God praise. Somebody will have a dream and see me say, Please bury me, Jaga, and leave me. Ah, but he said you will not die while you are talking all that nonsense. I'm in heaven. Happy and rejoicing and looking at you and saying, Instead of crying for me, you better go and listen to my messages and make a living out of your life. For for me to live is Christ. But to die is gain. Look at the stress that is killing you. Is it not because of ego? Talk to me. 90% of the depression that is killing us in this life is an attempt to protect our image. We say, and I need to cut away what 
nonsense image. Ask a man who built an image that God smashed into pieces. He built 90 feet of his image, protected by bowing down. God says, But those who entered the fire to protect the image of God, God says, I come to protect you. Brothers and sisters, I give you an advice. Carry your reputation like a sacrifice. Hand it over to God and enter your rest. This is a deliverance for someone now. Is that true? Yes. The 40,000 house rent is killing you. You don't have the money. But to go and meet your friend and squat, you are saying, no, I need them to know, please, enter your rest. Back out of that place and go and give yourself peace. Instead of dying to maintain your reputation. They have been seen you wearing only one shoe. I need to get another one. Nobody has been seen you. People have their problems. It is your, it is your, your, the punishment that comes from not handing over everything to God. I'd like you to pray as you are seated and say, Lord, I am tired of carrying a load you told me to give you. I hand it over. Apostle, but people are always asking me, when will I marry? It will kill you. Don't let depression kill you. Hand everything over to God and enter your Sabbath. Enter your rest. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him from God. Pray, Lord, make me your priority. I'm willing to commit time to knowing you. I'm willing to commit to surrender everything and make you a priority. This obsession I have for marriage, this obsession for children, this obsession for job, this obsession for power, this obsession for ministry and rema and miracles is taking your place. Return back to your throne, O God. If this is all I share tonight, is worth it. Where would I be if you left me? Where would I be if you left me? Where would I be? That's my testimony. You Listen. Where would I be if he left me? This song means a lot to me because you see, brothers and sisters, he is the invisible force behind men who command results. You don't see him, you only see them. So chances are that they are the ones who you can shake. They are the ones who you can soar to. But every great man knows that behind him is an invisible and mighty God. Unmovable. I may shake, but he's unmovable, unshakable. But the people that do know their God shall defy status quo. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The first prize while revisiting the mysteries that make for greatness. Brothers and sisters, let's return to the place of intimacy. Let's return to the place of intimacy. This is a call. Return to the place of intimacy. Spend time with God. Draw strength from Him. Talk to Him. Don't hide anything from Him. Open your all to Him. It will be foolish and silly to hide anything from Him. Everything. Carry your pain. Carry your tears. Learn to spend time with God alone. Hold on please. There are some of you, as I look at you, you don't yet have the passion for God to go on a personal retreat. No. You are churchy, you love God, you don't drink, you don't steal, you don't humanize, you don't follow men, but you don't love God. You can't go by yourself and lock your house and say, please, 
I need to spend time. Some of you, the last time you did this was a long time ago. Ministry carries its place in your life. Listen, you must learn the power of retreating. Even if it's just for a day, do it. Lock yourself. Lord, I come before you. You are the God of my strength. I am open and naked before you. These are my crowns. These are my things. I bring them with you. And you fellowship with you. And he talks to you. Ah, my son, I love you. Correct this. Add this to your life. I'm introducing this. Begin to see things this way. And you come out of there with fire and grace. And people look at you and your life is an unending compendium of wonder. Wonder unfolding. When a man gasses out, it's a sign that he has left the secret place in a long time. Freshness is one of the characteristics of the secret place. Look at me. Whether you are working class or you are a student, you are a father, you are a mother, you are a husband or a wife, I'd like you to write it if you are writing. I must create time alone, underline alone with God. MOG, create time more with God. Because all you have to serve the people is what you receive in the secret. Thank you, Jesus. That's how it works. You want to experience a, a life of unending victory. It always starts with you, not principles. We are coming to principles, but you. not just an encounter. An encounter can be a one-time experience, but intimacy is fellowship, is friendship, staying, remaining with you, where he becomes your priority. Sister, a brother comes into your life and meets you madly in love with God. He won't do anyhow to you like that because he met, when he meets you idle, uh, idle, carelessly moving around, waiting for a man, that's when he does everything for you. He comes to find you in worship. Can we see by this time, oh, I would love to, but I, I need to spend some time with God. Ah, which God? Well, that's, that's what I do. Ah, but I use them. You are behaving like if you are a child. And you, you just see that as a sign from God. That this is going to be a wicked husband. You don't need to go and ask God again whether he's the will of God. God answered you there. Your passion forced an answer from him. Are we together? I love God. I love Jesus. I love God. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, help me love you. Help me love you genuinely. The price of intimacy. The price of intimacy. Let no westernization preach you out of this, my brother, my sister. The price of intimacy. Let education not preach you out of this. Let a job, let money, let marriage, let children not preach you out of this. Well, before ministry was, he was, and he is, and will ever be. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. I must become all part and no thing of your life for anything in between to make sense. Please pray. I re-established re my covenant of intimacy. For Jesus, you're the God never runs dry. Yes, you are the God that will run dry. Other things may run dry. Jesus, you're the God that will run dry. Not in my life. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. It's impossible.
impossible to marry a bad woman when your heart is connected to God. You attract what looks like you. You leave God that you are doing all kinds of rubbish. The devil will bring Jezebel to your life that will tear your head and tear your anointing into pieces. It's impossible to marry a bad man. All these men that drive you to church, they leave you somewhere. Sisters, I'm talking to you. They all go and do koinonia. Pray for us, oh Mother Teresa. As soon as they are rounding up, they are there by that place where they are selling something. They are waiting for you. They pick you and say, I love you. Nonsense. Let me deliver you now. If there are such kind of people in your life, you better send them a text and tell them, get out of my life so that God himself will bring my husband or my wife. Hallelujah. Anybody that hates your God and likes you is a liar. No, sir. You come under my roof, you serve what I'm serving. You serve who I'm serving. You can't be under my roof and have your own rules. No, sir. It is from your intimacy you will raise your children. You can't give what you don't have. It is from your intimacy as a pastor. Let me tell you, when you love God and you hunger after Him, that fire comes. The people catch that fire and they love God too. You tell people to fast, you are eating secretly. You buy fish, you buy yam, you buy whatever people are laboring and they are fasting. You will eat and bells and dress and come and round up the meeting. I'd like you to think in one minute what is that one thing that is currently fighting the position of God in my life think, don't pray, think what is it what is that one thing that if God makes a demand now honestly I can't give it what is it some of us is our reputation I keep talking about this reputation my class I am this I am that the power of my hand I, I have seen mighty people fall like a leaf overnight because God they ignored God's assistance in their life you can be a CEO of XYZ today and be a billionaire and crash back to zero is God waking somebody up today Please return to the secret place. Return to the place where he is priority. Return to the age long and age old mystery of retreats. Where you take periodic times out with God. And just spend and cry before him. And say Lord thank you. That you fast for 100 days does not mean you love God. It can just mean that you are a strong person. Congratulations for that, but it's not equal to intimacy. Your all, your your hold the hand of your neighbor and pray for him and say Lord keep your love burning in him keep your love burning in her don't pray for yourself pray for your neighbor Lord keep your love burning that's the investment of prayer I'm making for my neighbor whether you are a newcomer or not Lord keep your let my neighbor prioritize you my neighbor loves you but you are not such a big deal to him or to her but Lord walk on his heart tonight walk on her heart tonight Are you blessed? Are you blessed? These are the mysteries. 
Let me teach you one more. Hmm. The second prize that I want to teach you tonight. Wherever we stop, we'll pray, we'll continue next week. I'm taking this thing because I really want us to understand. The second prize is the price of submission to authority. Listen. The price of submission to authority. Write it down. Hmm. The price, the embarrassing, the good thinking, but destiny molding price of submission to authority. The mysteries that turn people's lives into wonders. The price of submission to authority. Nobody promotes himself in this kingdom. You cannot promote yourself. You cannot accredit yourself. Nobody makes himself a professor. Nobody makes himself a doctor. Is that true? Pastor Alpha, you have supervisors. Correct? Mm -hmm. No student marks his project and say, I passed. Correct? In the kingdom, listen, the system of rising is such that it's not only God that approves you alone. Men must approve you. If not, you would never rise. Listen to me. Your approval is not just in the hands of God alone. It's in the hands of men too. Jesus knew this. That's why he had to look for John the Baptist. What will the Son of God be doing? The Son of God looked for John the Baptist for what? For what? The word that created the heavens and the earth started for John the Baptist. When John sees it himself, he says, Behold the Lamb. That's enough to make his head big and say, Oh, so you know, then I means I will go back. He said, No. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a secret. Permit it to be so. I know that I created you, but suffer it to be so that all scriptures will be fulfilled. That there be no legal basis for my remaining small. Listen, I know that God has approved you, but have men approved you? You will think it does not matter. Go and find out those who made kings in the Bible. Whether the spirit appeared as a ghost. God chose them. Men anointed them kings. Is it in your Bible? How God anointed Jesus, but did, did it come like that? No. Samuel, how long will you weep over Paul? Seeing that I rejected him. Go and take your horn. I want to use David, but you have refused to cooperate with me. I have approved him from heaven. But David cannot rise because the man that will pour the oil and approve him refused. God approves a man as a king and on earth the authority to accredit him is still negotiating. And because of that, that person remains grounded. Listen. Saul, the son of Kish, was looking for his father's donkey when he met an authority that could approve and he called him he said come go up i will tell you what is in your heart and all of a sudden he anointed son and poured oil on him and his life changed whoever lied to you that when you say to hell with men you will prosper the bible says believe in the lord your god you want to be established wonderful but if you want to make it in this life Brothers and sisters, you must submit to God's scriptural pattern of authority. Your alignment to God's scriptural chain of authority decides how and what flows to you. Your alignment to God's scriptural chain of authority determines how and what flows to you. There are prophets in the Bible who were preordained by God to be prophets. There were other prophets who were made prophets. 
Nowhere in the Bible, it was never written that they should be prophets. Amos was not a prophet. He was a farmer. He was an agriculturist. But a man saw him and made him a prophet. Elisha was not a prophet. Oh, I hope you know that. When Elijah took his girdle and slapped it on Elisha while he was farming, Elisha started following him. The result was that he became a prophet. Agabus, a man in the Bible called Agabus, who gave birth to daughters. The Bible never tells us that they were serious spiritually. But because they were born, they came out of a loin, the loins of a man who for whatever reason was a prophet, the old daughters were prophets too. Your submission to authority is a mystery that governs promotion. Ask anybody who is honest enough to admit and tell them the day they began to discern authority what happened in their lives. That's why you see, those who dishonor the body of Christ will never rise. You've heard me say this. All those who make it a point of duty, they insult every man of God, they insult every church. Once it's not your pastor, everybody is an object of. There is a sin that you can do against the body of Christ. A man cannot just sin against God alone, you can sin against the body of Christ. And the Bible says, jealousy is the rage of a man. I cannot come and insult a Jewish wife and expect him to smile. The first understanding of authority is your submission to the body. Not just to man of God, not just to spiritual fatherhood. Your submission to the body, the multifaceted dimension of God that is scattered in the body. Your ability to acknowledge that the body of Christ is a compendium of infinite possibilities. Regardless of what your unique biases are. When you love the body, you are ready to access the deep things in the spirit. God will never do business with you when you hate his body. There are people who are fasting giants for their cynicism against the body. Mention any name of any man of God, they have something to say. Mention it, they, that attitude of sarcasm and they wonder why regardless of fasting and prayer nothing comes. The body. The Bible says, for this cause, not discerning the body, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. This cause, many do sleep. As a ministry, we have clearly defined our position over the body. I love the body of Christ. You will never hear me open my mouth and talk about any man of God and any ministry. It doesn't mean I believe everything. I have my reservations. But I love the body. A wounded bride is still a bride. If a woman injures her hand on her wedding day, does it stop her from marrying? That woman you insult every time, called the church, is someone's wife. Submission to the body. Submission to the body. That you discern that this body of Christ is a compendium of possibilities. The blessing of God always comes to you through alignment to authority. The blessing of God, please everyone listen, the blessing of God will always come to your life through alignment. Write this down. I learned this from Dr. Mike Mudok. The primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Write it down. The primary purpose of authority, the primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Provision. When you submit to authority, you have access to the promotion that that authority commands. When you submit to authority, you have access to the protection. We call it a covering. 
and when you submit to authority you have access to promotion are we blessed you can never promote yourself you can never accredit yourself listen when you see people submit to authority let me tell you why people hate submission come pastor Alpha. there are many people what they are doing is pseudo submission you know what we call pseudo submission one leg in one leg out you are not exactly there but you are just there who is this guy well he's a very he's a senior colleague he's just a brother there you are you are you would never rise that way no way god is not a proud star you are in need or you are out i will never forget a gentleman who walked up to me one day and said sir i've been looking at you i think he's still seeing me i've been watching you i've been watching your lifestyle and uh, you know i just feel i need to come close to you i told this get out of here don't, don't waste my time go and walk on your pride in the secret place when your discernment is complete and you understand that not all human beings are pure human beings then when you submit to a man you don't submit to a body you submit to a system are we together if you fly a plane somebody drives it even if it is your jet somebody drives it the jet is guaranteed to carry you but not all, everybody will be a driver that's how it is in life listen no matter how you fear god and no matter how you love god there are things that you will get based on connection you will pray in the secret place god will refer you to his structure the bible says the church was built in a very strange way it says christ being the chief cornerstone after that he said it was on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets not just by name then the body was built there are certain graces when you don't encounter in your life you will never rise i know this looks like human worship but these are the secrets that other people who are not very smart they just know how to encounter it the body of christ do you have that discernment i've shared with you how we receive the grace for long life we transported the grace of love for long life officially and brought it to this ministry yeah i know how we got it when we stopped at that place that border between Quara state and Ekiti state there is a strange mystery that goes on there 142 132 125 healthy ah, we stopped quickly we went to the baba there we said sir there is a grace for long life here we wanted the man laugh he said nilda he didn't say are you a pastor because when you go as a pastor you stay outside when you submission demands a stripping of whatever robe or regalia and a an acknowledgement that's what we did on a very good day he says sir i'm just returning from a ministry where there are miracles baba do you know me cannot even speak english we got we had to look for an interpreter and he spoke in that jare young people we knelt down and this man began to speak i told you i met the wife of the 132 year old man who died i think she was like maybe 120 something you would think she's 60. and i told her i said ah when the woman saw she tapped me she said follow me i didn't care where i was going no, no matter what i saw i would stay there because i know what brought me there if i was cynical i said madam where are you taking me i'm a born again believer no go there first she showed me the picture of her youth with the one 32 year old man afterwards we told her that they prayed for us but since you are the wife two have become one the man is dead you are alive so he's still alive and the woman removed her shoes then kneel down what do you think i'll do hey. submission submission let me tell you what many of us will do mama just pray is that meaning down that's pride you are not receiving a sword 
One of the biggest enemies of submission is that we think submission is the way of demeaning our own self. Now, truly speaking, do you know there are people who do that? They purposely demean you in the name of submission. That's wrong. There are insecure men and women of God scouting around for anybody they can call son or daughter to increase their accolades, not because they understand what they have. And they will purposely humiliate you, especially in the open, to show. Look, Jesus was with the people who were submissive to him, but you did not even know who Jesus was. They had to use a key to identify him. I choose to be like you. You don't have to move around and when people are there, you say, yeah, pass off and shift, let them know I'm the one. When they know, you can come back. I watch people who hate submission, having passion for sons and daughters. They hate submission, they hate acknowledging authorities. They come for a meeting and see a, a man of God that deserves honor, uh, all protocols duly observed. Ah, uh, Pastor Femi, hi. Is that greeting? That is, that, is, that is the attitude of pride that drives grace down. Look, if you are anointed, you are anointed. It's as simple as that. If it's not there, it's not there. Are we together? Authority. I can share with you encounters after encounters. One of the things I love about the leaders and the people in this ministry, and that's why you see that many of them have been able to reproduce this grace, is because they understand submission. Truly speaking, I tell you. I am very proud of the workers in this ministry. I am proud of the heads of departments. The they understand submission. Submission is not a way of managing a man of God's insecurity. Listen. Never form a team where the loyalty of the people is questionable. Let me give you an advice. If I want to create, come, come, come down here. If I want to establish a company, come. One, two, three, four. If I notice your loyalty is questionable, I will sack you. What? Where will you? Oh, but you are, you are gifted. Just carry your gift and go away with it. You only deal ruthlessly with rebellion. Listen, I'm telling you. People will interpret it as insecurity. But it is irresponsible for a leader to see rebellion and let it go. Deal with it. Are we together? Yes. I will not let anybody to be close to me. Who does not listen to me and acknowledge your job, the Lord, of, of, on my life over him, I will not. I don't hate you, I won't fight you, but you certainly will not be close to me. You know why? Because you will not receive and you will corrupt the passion of others from coming to receive. Because they will say you are close. Why are you not getting this result? I say, yeah, this thing. Is it not we that are close to them? We, we, we that are, if me, I'm close like this. Have you ever seen me heal the sick? So you should be doubting and say, ah, you mean it? That anointing is dead. But I didn't say he's fake. Oh, I only said, am I not close to him? Why has the team not come on me? Take those kind of people out of your life. I'm, I'm talking to you sincerely. Take them out of your life. Anybody that comes close to you, as, I, I don't mean everybody, but as somebody, a man of God, or somebody that God has lifted to a measure, not all of them will submit to you in terms of fatherhood, but they should be able to acknowledge what God is doing in your life, enough to listen when there is time to listen. Are we together? You are watching here, and your music director is talking to you, and says, ah, like I read in the book, mm-hmm. keep quiet. You do it again, you do it tomorrow, if I'm you, you will never sing here again. No way. It's more than holding the mic and a good voice. You don't listen. That's how one day they'll say, sing after two times transpose, and you invent your own. Everybody transposes only you, and you are just dancing because people are clapping. You are dancing, and you mess up. Team spirit only happens when there is an agreement to submit. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That's why many people never rise. All blessings come 
they flow from a scriptural chain of authority. A few weeks ago, Pastor Alpha went to stand in for me for a meeting and a number of our people. And after the meeting, one of the mothers there sent me a text and said, Apostle, you have reproduced yourself verbatim in these people. And I smiled. I said, they deserve it. They deserve it. One of our dear ones here, when he was in the school of ministry, you know, this was somebody that God helped. And one time he went towards their graduation time, he went to minister somewhere. And my goodness, it was an experience. There was such an avalanche of the presence and the power of God. And when he returned back, he was saying, ah, this and that and that. And I told him, when you listen and you submit, you have it. Everybody say, submission to authority. Learn it today. Learn it. We have to stop here. But if just doing these two things alone, the, the Bible says God called Abraham. He says a lot went with him. Is that in your Bible? Lot did what? In this day, Abraham said, Lord, let's go. Lord said, I'm going. I'm sure Abraham said, you better go back home. And Lot went with him. God called Elijah and Elisha went with him. Elisha had sons of the prophets who paid school fees and they were receiving lectures from a lecturer. But Elisha said, since I didn't pay anything, I will humble myself and follow. He was the one who poured water on the hands of Elisha. I'm not saying to compel people to worship you. Please don't do that. I, I know that the leaders in this ministry will not do that. Don't just make... There are times that people do some unnecessary worship. You know you have not gotten to the level that demands that. You stop it consciously. Even as I am now. There are things... There are some mothers old enough to be my mother. Old enough. More older than my mother. They will see me and they want to kneel down. I will be stupid at my age and level to allow a woman kneel down like that. She acknowledges me. No. If I try to carry her up and she refuses, I kneel down with her too. That's a wise person. So, fatherhood is not a way of massaging your ego to watch people worship you. While they do it, you make sure the crowd is watching. No. God will punish you for playing with people's lives like that. But brothers and sisters, there are mysterious benefits to submission. One of it is the flow of grace. One of it is the flow of grace. Believe this, oh. Believe this. Pastor Jimmy was telling me yesterday that he was talking with someone, a meeting that I'm going for next year somewhere, and then he was talking with the person. The person had had me mention his name, and he, you know, they got in touch, and he was saying, Sir, I've had Apostle talk about you so, so much. And I was so touched yesterday, he's just hearing it now. A Jimmy was talking to me, and he said that he told the man, he said, Sir, your life and your ministry is about to shift in a way that you will never imagine. When he said it, I looked at him. I said, this is somebody who is my friend. He's so close to me. But that ability to discern. Some of you, you know why God never lets you come close to a man of God? Your proximity for familiarity, your, your propensity for familiarity is too bad. Way together someone came one day to see me and when he came he saw me eating corn and he was laughing he needed a someone he saw me i was eating corn and he was talking he said yeah you should allow me to eat before i pray for him i said don't be foolish didn't you come for prayer does eating the corn does anointing flow through corn or through whatever if if you are coming to listen keep quiet and listen otherwise please walk out of here You can be sleeping on the same bed with your miracle and lack of submission. There is no woman here who should refuse submitting to her husband. Any woman that refuses submitting to her husband, I don't care whether the husband is a man of God or not. Listen, ladies, if you are about to get married, make sure you are willing to submit to your husband. I am not... A, I am I will not advocate oppressing women I don't do that but all these women alive movement and all this gender equality thing there is a balance to gender equality I don't oppress ladies 
I have a great deal of honor and respect for ladies. But all this nonsense of what a man can do, a woman can do also, is, is deception. No, I don't look down on women, but the correct position of a woman's victory is under authority. Please learn this. Rebellious, noisy, mouth ladies that cannot submit to authority have signed for a life of defeat and pain. Listen, so submission to authority. That was the problem with Jezebel. It was obvious I have submitted to her and not the other way around. Because it was her that was running the nation. When Eve violated the law of submission, there was access to the serpent. God causes you to submit to protect you. I look at people who are in this ministry, but they are not really connected genuinely. Because I do not see the grace finding expression in their lives. There are people who have never come here. It's not about coming to lie down the altar necessarily. It's not even about sowing into the life of a man of God, carrying his handkerchief, carrying... Some of those things sometimes can just be ritualistic, really. But the truth of it is a connection. Connection is based, the Bible says, as, as um, faith answers to faith. There is a connection, genuine connection, genuine honor, whether in the secret or in the open. You will never sometimes, before your hands are ever laid on you, you will walk in that grace and reproduce in paradise. Why have you not entered certain breakthroughs that you see? It is because submission is not genuine. Submission is not genuine. Praise the Lord. First, fatherhood. But then second, a recognition of people that have gone ahead of you. You notice sometimes when I'm counseling people, when someone comes, is talking about issues, finance, or breakthrough, or this, I say, please go to a Jimmy. Sometimes if they can see a Jimmy laughing there, and they just go and stand, this guy, and I say, you remain poor and broke here because you are not willing to listen. This guy, you see, carries his strange grace for wealth. I'm walking to Jimmy. That grace on him came from his late mother. My first genuine watch, genuine watch, not all those things, genuine watch then, the mom gave me from UK. That was never spoiled. I stole it. Painful. Nobody invents mantles, they are transferred. So if you ever see it on someone, it left somewhere to come there. Don't trivialize it. The men may be young, but the mantles are ancient. It's like water, please help me. It's like water. Do you know the water on earth is older than everybody? It keeps recycling. That means somebody drank it. Abraham drank the water you are drinking. Isaac, because it only recycles. The crops can come out. The corn and eat in Abraham, they eat it. But the water in the sea? Oh no, come on. That's how man goes. This healing grace, nobody invents it. Nobody, even if you receive directly from God, to you it was an encounter. But when God shows you the dynamics, it was a connection. I've taught you on systems. Nobody will ever walk on post in prosperity in Sultan Kenneth Copeland. Start from anywhere in the world. The mantles keep connecting themselves until it gets to the final person. Kenneth Copeland is not carrying a mantle of what is the system on earth to the body that represents that possibility. You want to walk in the anointing and in the healing ministry. Start from any man of God. You keep connecting until it gets to Benihim now, currently. You see that? You don't invent a road that has been found. There are people who are millionaires today, they are not smart. 90% of what we teach in business schools, they don't know anything about it. But they were just stupid enough to discern. There is an ancient mystery. I've shared with you my story. Remember the two women, Jimmy? That I bought sugar cane for. 
two women that were wearing tatter dresses. I bought page sugar cane for them. A woman that cannot afford 50 naira now blesses me and says, My son, forever walk upon gold. That's what the woman told me. Forever walk upon gold. I believe I received a strange. I don't believe that woman was a pure human being. I believe they were angels in disguise. I don't believe that woman was a pure human being. I have had many encounters like that, but this one was strange. Overnight. The race is not to the spirit. I'm showing you how these systems work in the kingdom. I've shared with you how I went to Canaan land to go and sow a seed to Bishop David Oedipo. When I finished all of that, I came out. When I came out, please help this lady. I came out. I, was, I had already been working in signs and wonders. Bordered flights by myself to go and sow a seed to a man of God. Most of you do it, but it's not genuine. You just do it there for the sake of it. Listen. More greatness produced from alignment that it will be done from knowledge. More greatness will come from alignment in the days to come than it will come from knowledge. I will teach you about knowledge. I teach you about skill. But brothers and sisters, there are ancient dimensions that are not subject to just knowledge. You can enter a reality before your mind catches up. I remember when people, I didn't used to walk very strongly in the prophetic. You know, here and there, God will help me, but it wasn't anything serious. I remember when I was browsing William Branham, people were lambasting that guy, saying nobody's carrying his anointing, nobody's carrying all this insults, they insult men of God. Be careful. I remember watching his video one night early in the morning and i just sat down tears were rolling down my eyes i saw the humility and the compassion from that man i said how could people this guy was a thousand times more humble than me and yet people keep talking about him and all of a sudden i felt it was like something on my head it took like 30 minutes it was coming down the next meeting i went to it was like a joke I started seeing names on people over people's heads. I said, this is strange. Don't ignore submission. You will pay for it. I know you went to school. But let me tell you, there are people who read, let me not call the name of any course, had that class, but were connected to an ancient mantle that can manipulate realities. And today they are working in NMP. They've been working in NMPC for decades with a past degree. They've been sacking anybody, but the grace that brought there still keeps them. You would think they've been sleeping around. No, sir. Listen, before you submit to an authority, discern the graces that work. Discern the forces that work. Discern just sit down and say, I am this, I am this. Whether you call it say Papa, you say whatever, you will never discern it. Discern it. How you know you are genuinely connected is that the results start reproducing in your life. Sometimes in a shocking way, let me tell you, if we send a dog from Koinonia, dog, D-O-G, I carry this handkerchief and tie it on that dog. I promise you and I send it for a crusade. People will rise up from wheelchairs and the sick. The power of God will flow. It's not about the dog. It's about what is carrying. There are some things that are not just based on your personal work. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God said it's a year of triumph. He knows that there are many things you don't know. And if it's to wait just on some things that you need to know to prosper the natural way will take years before you really understand it. But there is a system. When he said it, there was already a provision. But you are refusing to tap into it because of pride. Pride. favor every day in my life every day is one thing I know 
if you ever are looking for the grace for favor and you have been looking around and you are not getting it you are a liar and you are calling god a liar and god will not be happy with you because that grace is more than available it's just that people don't know it there is nothing i'm wearing from my head to my toe that i bought with my money no, plus my stockings head to toe Favor is real. You can sit and argue it in pride. Say it doesn't matter and sit down there. But you can believe and say, But Lord, this is possible. The life changes. Automatically. Do you believe this thing I'm sharing with you? I've taught you two things today. The price to develop intimacy. And the price of genuine connection. Genuine connection. Genuine connection. You come from Colonia here, you see manifestations of the spirit. There are people like that, they have reproduced it everywhere. Frankly speaking, they can tell you I'm in a meeting, say, I didn't even pray, oh, honestly. I just said, Father, we give you thanks. And people started for even then they will go back and say, I but God, thank you for covering for me. It's alignment. When he dedicated the Jerusalem temple, he turned and said, Lord, whoever faces here, he didn't say if he prays well. Once he turns this direction and he aligns with this direction, please hear them. So when Daniel was in trouble, he couldn't depend on his personal work. He opened the gate towards Jerusalem and said, This is a matter of life and death. I can't afford to take risks and play with myself. Hallelujah. It is a lot to him. Then it is marvelous. Marvelous. Go to Ida and you, you go to you go to Destiny Makers International Pastor Alpha's ministry. It's like Koinonia reproduced verbatim. Now the shocking part, how you know this is grace reproduced, is that not all of them have come here. Let me tell you something about spirit transfer. You don't have to learn it. The anointing will make you do it. Are we together now? The anointing will make you think in a certain way. It will make you understand scripture in a certain way to produce certain outcomes. It's the year of trial because there is a possibility for a transfer. There are some things we should never cry about in this ministry. One of it is the presence of God. One of it is the favor of God. One of it is the gift of men. One of it is the mantle for honor. One of it is revelation and understanding. One of it is prayer. One of it is influence. Do you not see the graces flying around looking for those with discernment to receive? The ranger comes, visits Koinonia once and carries that thing and goes back and their lives change. There are people listening to me right now from Mubi. It was, I think it was yesterday I got the text. When I went there just a few weeks ago, I prophesied to them because their roads are bad. And I told them, I said, in the name of Jesus, I attract the attention of the government here to fix this road. Just yesterday, the governor was there and they commit you, you. Okay, you were there when we got the text. The governor came there, commissioned the road. See, let me tell you this thing. Don't wait till your life gets too bad. I know the dimension of the prophetic God gave me. It's called the creative dimension of prophecy. Creation. You make things happen. You program them in the realm of the spirit. You hear people come to testify here. It's not just about speaking. Brothers and sisters, don't delay your life by yourself. Our time is gone, but we are going to pray for five minutes. Rise up, everybody. Can we rise up and pray? Please rise up and rise up. We are going to pray. Prayer point number one Father, help me to be serious with you. Genuinely. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Agata Gatos Tata Frediana Malacatosa. Identify them. Uh-uh. We call them out. That little prayer you see in the name of Jesus that I say, everybody pray. I can just pray alone. It's not a ritual. When I say, everybody pray, you are a benefactor of an anointing that should come to you. Are we together now? When we pray, sometimes I say, hold hands and let's pray. That's the reason why I listen to every message. I've told you, I don't sit down and do any big money. Because the things you hear me preach most times, yes, I prepared it and all of that. But let me tell you, the anointing that delivers those things is bigger than me. I have to go back and listen by myself and receive the prophecy for myself. Otherwise, I can be blessing others and never enter certain dimensions. Praise the Lord. Please lift your hands. The time is done. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. I pray for everyone here. Honestly speaking, from the depth of my heart, I pray for you. From today, I release you into a strange realm of favor. A strange realm of favor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, receive it right now. Favor on everything you do. I decree and declare the kind of open doors you have never seen. I prophesy to your life right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I command this mysteriously. Some you will not even be able to explain how it happened. I command the doors to open now. 
I command the door to open now. I decree and declare the gift of men. If men have never risen to help you, I place that anointing on your life. Begin to enjoy the ministry of men. Enjoy the ministry of men. I pray for you. The kind of hunger God can put in a man, if you have never carried it, carry it now. Hunger is a fire. Carry it now in the name of Jesus. Carry it now in the name of Jesus. Carry it now in the name of Jesus. Hunger for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. I pray for you. Whatever makes people trivialize your grace, there is a grace for honor and influence. It's not by forcing people to honor you. Shabakatos Kaparia Takata. In the name of Jesus, everyone genuinely connected to this grace. Carry that grace for honor. Carry that grace for honor. Carry that grace for influence. Go where it cannot take you. Go where your education cannot take you. Go where your family background cannot take you. I break every obstacle and I push you forward in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. I hold this money in my hand as a point of contact. I stretch it towards you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I release you into a dimension of strange wealth. I release you now. Receive it. Step into it. I'm not talking of business. Suffering wealth by the things of God. I release you into it. In the name of Jesus, I command people who did not do anything for, who did offer any value for them, they will call you and bless you by the strange hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. I pray for you. Many of you have never, you have not seen it, but I pray. People will no longer just be giving you money. I command that they start giving you items, properties, vehicles. I command it, believe it, that something you would have saved for one year, in one day, I release that anointing upon you. Jobs you didn't apply for. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I create space for you in the realm of the Spirit. Everything you have tried and tried to do, everybody tries it. It has made you mad time for years. By prophecy, move forward now. By prophecy, move forward now. Move forward now. Move forward now. Hear me? Any business here that is barren of customers, nobody comes. You are good. You, your products, your services, right now from tomorrow morning, in a strange way, I command patronage for your business. If there is anyone here, you are anointed by God and God has trained you, but no open doors for ministration, no opportunity to bless people, no opportunity for your grace to be recognized, I declare, let that veil be open now. I command men to discern your grace and to take advantage of it. There is a grace in this ministry that leaves shame. I pray for you. Anything that represents shame in your life, put out to disgrace. May the God that I serve arise and bring you out. In the name of Jesus, some of you, your family members, right now they are at the point of intense shame. If God does not help them, the embarrassment will be too much. I decree and declare, may the God of heaven arise. 
and do a miracle for them. In the name of Jesus, please all do this week as you pray. I'd like you to pray with understanding. Lord, I believe in you. I believe in your servant. I believe in you. I receive what you have released that came through the word that is the word of triumph. I receive it. Write down the things you want to see happen. Continue your praise over it. You may not do it every day, but when you have opportunity, don't just dance anyhow. Write the request. Lord, these things must happen before December. And I thank you. I worship you for it. And you watch. We are, we are doing a strange. Just cooperate with God and watch what happens in the weeks coming. God wants you to testify. He wants you to know that He is God. Lift your hands and thank Him. Father, we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. I trust that God will grant us grace. We began to share how that results are not a mistake. Results are not a coincidence. Every time you see results in the life of a person, whether spiritual results, whether financial results, whether intellectual results, they are governed by laws. One of the things that we have taught again and again in this house is after an encounter with the person of God. The next thing you have to understand are the principles that govern this kingdom that we live in. Are we together? The same way there are physical laws in our world and they are all responsible for different dimensions of results. There is gravity, there are destruction, there are all kinds of forces at work. Whether you acknowledge their presence or not, they are still at work. The same way we have physical laws, that's the same way we have spiritual laws. And these laws are responsible for certain outcomes that we desire. Praise the Lord. One of the keys for productivity and results in this kingdom is to be able to connect your desires to spiritual laws that are responsible for the result. You see, most of us are aware of the existence of these principles, but we do not know which one is responsible for what results. So we try them at random, hoping, and my assignment is to be able to guide your understanding that we accuracy and certainty and conviction you know what spiritual principle is responsible for what outcome are we together now and we started um, by talking about a few prices that we must pay I told us how that in the kingdom we receive by grace but then the Bible says it is true faith by grace available true faith becomes your experience Anything that is not available by grace cannot become your testimony, cannot be part of your life. The grace of God is not just saving grace. The grace of God available, the kingdom that can only be provided for by Christ, is called grace. Now, your faith is the summation of all the principles that you engage in that helps you to make that that has been available in Christ to become your experience today. Salvation is by grace, your faith makes it your experience. Healing is by grace, your faith makes it your experience. Prosperity is by grace, your faith makes it your experience. So grace alone without engaging faith just leaves realities as potentials. Your life will never become that experience. Engaging these laws are a contribution, your own alignment with God to make sure that these truths become your reality and I began to share with us a few things I've not found one person in my life who does not want to succeed now others may not admit others are outspoken about being successful others are religious about it but the truth about it is that every human being on earth of the 7.2 billion people you ask the arm robber why he's feeling he tells you he wants to succeed correct Ask someone in the hospital why they don't want to die. They believe that they have a future and they are, there's so much they want to do with their lives. And I'm teaching us this because I do not want us to waste our time shadow boxing, trying to find meaning and relevance. Life was not designed to be lived by guesswork. You don't have that much time to guess. You have to work 
through life with a level of exactness and certainty if you believe that say amen the first price we discussed just a quick recap is the price of knowing god daniel 11 verse 32 the b part it says but the people that do know their god the first price any believer has to pay is the price for encounter with god not just principles principles are only useful when there is an encounter with a person take note when you begin to pursue principles and mysteries and you do not have an encounter with God, it will be vain babblings. It will make you arrogant and eventually your results will destroy you. It is your encounter with the person of the Christ through the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that makes every other result you get relevant. There are people who become rich and leave God. There are people who become influential and leave God. That's because they had access to principles but they skipped the place of encounter. So the starting point of any kind of result and that which will last is an encounter. Everybody say an encounter. You must pay the price to know God. Knowing God requires time. Knowing God requires passion. Knowing God requires prioritizing Him above all things. Carnality is not having money. Carnality is not having materials. Carnality is an attachment. The attachment you have. A poor person can be carnal. You've just not had enough physical materials to help you demonstrate the carnality. Are we together now? And um, there are many, many carnal people in the body of Christ attached to things, possessions, money, cars, material things here and there. And um, you must pay the price to know God. Number two is the price of genuine submission to authority. I taught us about that and I'm glad that many people are beginning to understand this. There is an imbalance of authority. There is an imbalance of submission that has been taught for many years in the body of Christ. It's the imbalance of usurping people's rights and making men demigods. That's an error. It's unscriptural. There is a place for submission. And I took out time to explain to us that the purpose of authority is for protection provision and promotion nobody promotes himself is that true and um, i know we are all in christ for the election of grace has separated people into strata you violate god's system of blessing you will pay for it everybody has access to the christ but god has designed that there is a system by which men receive results one of it is authority so there is an imbalance of authority where people do not have rights again they don't have brains men of god become the gods of people they tell you when to eat they tell you when to have another child they tell you no 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 all the, that is rubbish it's just the insecurity of men on rampage so they spiritualize it and carve out a group of people that can find victims of their insecurities that's imbalance praise the lord Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, if at any point you don't find me following Christ, do not follow me. I want us to be very, very clear about the concept of authority. There are many insecure men and women of God, well-meaning, but they carry their complexes from poor backgrounds. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know, Africa is a very loyal continent. We are loyal to men of God. We are loyal to pastors and churches. And sometimes it is that loyalty that has become the unbecoming of people. They were doing well until a man came into their life in the name of fatherhood and mentorship and wrecked and destroyed their life. They made people to leave jobs when they shouldn't leave jobs. They made people to not take drugs when they should take drugs. They made people to all kinds of things and destroy people's lives. Separated husbands and wives when they have no business separating because of some kinds of hilarious vision. So we must be careful. Submission is important. Authority is important. So that's one side of the imbalance. The other side of the imbalance is those who in a bid to address what I just explained. Now tell people there's no such thing as authority. Everybody can access God. No. You fight the body of Christ, you lose. There is a system with which the church was built. Are we together? The Bible tells us that the church was built like a building. He said every house is built by some man. Then he says God is the builder of all. Our work with God is based on relationship. 
but kingdom advancement is based on covenant and i've explained it to us the way that god operates on earth is that all his multifaceted dimensions are resident within individuals they become the portals through which the generation experiences that dimension of god so prosperity for instance god finds a man opens his understanding to an unusual dimension of god in that area and then makes that man a symbol a portrait a representation of that possibility so that every other man on earth who must enter that dimension must do it in alignment to both god and that system he has set up you will never enter that time you may believe in god but if you do not believe in what that individual represents and submit to it you will never enter that dimension no man will work greatly in the healing ministry insulting benihim no man will work greatly in prosperity and faith insulting kenneth copeland even if you believe you have more revelation than him he's more than a human being he's a system that communicates a dimension of god's reality the bible is full of mysteries and um I wish I had time. I don't want to go back to work all of those. Remember, there was a time when the nation of Israel wanted to fight war. They were fighting war. And Moses, these guys had their swords. But behind the scene, there was a man who was lifting his rod. Is that true? The Bible says, as he lifted the rod, although the people were the ones doing the physical fighting, but the results were controlled by one man's hand. Now watch this. The Bible says a time came when Moses' hand was getting weak. The wisest thing to do is to say, Sir, you are an elder. Just sit down. Let me help you. Is that not true? The wisest thing to do is to help the man. Not everything can be done by everybody. Ask Saul why he lost his throne. He said, What is there? Somewhere we can't be waiting for you. Are you so special? Give me the knife. And when Samuel came, he said, Saul, what have you done? He said, you would have allowed me come. God would have preserved your throne forever. But now you have done foolish today. By this foolish act, violating rankings in the spirit, your throne is taken from you. Authority is real. Not everybody you see is a pure human being. I don't know how to make you believe this, but it's true. For this cause, many are weak, many are sick. People's pride has stopped them from entering simple, cheap victories because of their refusal to understand authority. It's not human worship. There are some battles that are needless if you fight them. If you fight those, if you ever fight those battles, it's because you are not wise. Are we together? Yes. Truly speaking, there are some battles that are products of foolishness. Moses' hand began to go down. The Bible never said their sword stopped being sharp. Just because a man's hand was going down, they started defeating them. And they said, look, whatever we we'll do to support your position for the sake of our victory, we'll do it. I know what many people in our generation will do. Moses, you are not the only one God is talking to. Please, help me with that rod, Jerry. I'll hold it and watch the rod kill you first. It looks simple until you see what is happening in the spirit. A man can say, God prosper. You say, what is there? Is it not just positive confession? You too, God prospers you and then you don't see any results. The law of authority. All the blessings of God come through the scriptural chain of authority. It is from Aaron's head down to his beard. Then it goes down to his skirt. Praise the Lord. When authority is done properly, it produces wonders. When there is any violation of it, whether on the part of the supposed spiritual father or on the part of those who submit to that grace, there will always be problem. Proximity is not submission. Availability, hanging around a grace, is not genuine submission. Submission is not weakness. Please listen, understand this. It is not a proof of weakness. Only a foolish man of God will take advantage of people because of their submission to his grace. Are we together? The law of authority. Learn it, use it. 
command true victories in your life. It's not idolatry. When it is done within the confines of scripture, it is not idolatry. Number three, we have a lot to do today. The third price that we must pay to produce extraordinary results is the price of mental transformation. The price of mental transformation. Numbers chapter 13. Please help us, media. It's a long reading from verse 25. The price of mental transformation. The sacrifice of upgrading your paradigm. The laborious sacrifice through the agency of the word and every other material whose thoughts are consistent with the word. Take note. First, the word of God, scripture, and then every other material intellectual material whose thought line is consistent with the word of god qualifies to be an instrument of mental transformation there are many believers who study the bible but they do not study the works of people who love god and who have paid the price to access these laws listen let me tell you this the law of the mind is an irrefutable principle if you must command results no matter how spiritual you are your life will eventually be a reflection of your understanding your life your physical environment will inevitably be a reflection of your understanding may not happen immediately but over a given period of time it is safe to say your experience the sum total of your experiences spiritually financially intellectually sociologically is a reflection of both your paradigm and your understanding if you lack money forever it is because there is an understanding you do not have if you are fighting with everybody forever there is an understanding you do not have are we together there can be momentary failures and setbacks agreed but when over a long period of time your experiences are the same is proof that your mindset is delivering that result say amen numbers chapter 13 we are reading from verse 25 to 33 this was the encounter of moses and the 12 spies listen and they returned from searching the land after 40 days we are reading to 33 and they went and came to moses these are the people now and aaron and to the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word to them listen and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told them and said we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is an evidence this is the fruit of it nevertheless listen this is a mindset speaking now everyone's communication is a window into your understanding you can fake it for a while but with time you will speak your true convictions nevertheless this is a faulty mindset interrupting the word of god the people that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and are very great and moreover we saw the children of anak there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites and the jebusites and the amorites dwell in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of jordan and caleb said guy keep quiet what is all this all you people are just freaking negative was i not there with you we saw it we just brought the fruits and Caleb sealed the people before Moses and said, Moses, as far as I'm concerned, this is doable. Let us go up at once and possess it. Why? For we are well able. Someone prophesied to yourself, I am well able. Say it again, I am well able. He said, we are able to overcome. In other words, I'm not refusing. It's a challenge. He didn't say I'm able to go through it. No. You don't deny the reality. But he said we are able. There is capacity within us to bring those giants down. Hallelujah. This is the power of a transformed mind. A man sits down and prophesies doom to himself because of his mindset. I can't make it. I am from Kaduna State. I am from Plateau State. I am from Benway. I am from Kogi. People from our family don't rise. It's a reflection of your understanding. 31 but the men that were up with him said we be not able to go against the people why for they are they've not fought oh. 
they, are, they fought in their minds and were defeated already. The result of their defeat was that for we, they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report. Listen now. What kind of report? Poor thinking will always make a man communicate what God calls an evil report. Of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land, though we have gone through, gone to search it, a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. The last verse. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. The anarchists never said, Hey, grasshopper! The people call themselves grasshoppers. The same way you call yourself um, a weak failure. The same way you call yourself all kinds of things. There is a price to pay to produce extraordinary results. Let me tell you, nobody is born with a transformed mind. Transformation is a spiritual investment. In case you see certain people confident and commanding results again and again, it is nobody is transformed by default, ladies and gentlemen. It is the labor dimension of the world that brings us to a point where we adjust our understanding. We've done many teachings aimed at building our mindsets and our understanding. I've taught us how paradigms are formed. The first way paradigms are formed uh, through our cultural backgrounds. We come from different cultures and then our environmental conditioning. We've lived among people who have been poor and broke. We have lived among people who have little or no respect for spiritual things. We have lived among people who do not value the power of the word of God. And unconsciously we have imbibed their way of life and their way of thinking as a paradigm, a set of belief, a plane of interpreting things. Your reality is interpreted by your perspective. And if you do not allow the word of God alter your perspective, you will fail in life in a way that you cannot imagine. Listen, I don't care what physical effort you are exerting, your life will eventually be a reflection of your mindset. There are many people who have failed before they started. It was very clear from their mindset and their thinking that they were not going to make it. So they were not surprised when they failed. It was just a confirmation of a defeat that had been in their minds. Are we together? We were like grasshoppers. So they called themselves. The Bible tells us how to think. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, do what? Thinking and wishing are two different things. Wishing is just mesmerizing on a result that you, will never happen in your life. But thinking is constructing your mind, your understanding. Many people do not think well. They don't even think at all. And if they do, they think on negative things. Listen to me. Much more than your physical activity, focus on making sure that your mindset has been constructed to produce victory. Are we together? You were insulted growing up. You probably were abused growing up and it put something in your mind about men. And you keep saying every man is a devil, every man is... No, not every man is a devil. In your world and based on your experience, all the people you have encountered are bad. But why don't you expand your horizon? How about prosperity? There are so many people, when you tell them, will you prosper? They say, when I read what? When I read what? Because... A society has programmed your mind that your wealth is entirely dependent on just what you study. So people make, they go out of their way to do malpractice because they hope that by so doing, it will give them an edge. Correct? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about God? What do you believe about life? You've heard me say again and again. 
it never ceases to amaze me those who hang themselves or, co or commit suicide. I don't think I hate myself that much. I understand quarreling myself, but to hang yourself is, um, is, is quite, you must be assisted by a spirit. You become a reflection, a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts. The thoughts that construct your understanding eventually become your life. Bring me someone who is as weak and beggarly and as villager as anything. Provided that person's heart is open to receive and learn. Give me six months with that person of thorough upgrading of his mind. I'm not talking of business. I'm not talking of whatever. Just allow me to change and alter that person's mind. If I never see that person in my life again, I can tell you, staking my life that that person will be a success. Regardless of what his life is at that moment. Now here is the reverse. Accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind. Your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe. Are we together? Now let's do a little experiment. Look up. Don't feel bad. How many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels? You never cross 30,000 mark. If somebody blesses you with 200,000, it will finish and return back to that range. If your understanding pegs you like the thermostat of an iron. You know how an iron is, you program it to be this hot. When it gets there, what happens? It breaks. That's it. There are people who will never cross 100,000. Give them one million. They will laugh only for one week. That money, the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way and manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are 100,000 allocators. So it's not enough to just claim and say I'm a millionaire. There is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind. It's like resonance in physics. Remember? Those who are science based, there's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork, is that true? At a particular frequency, every other object within that environment that is the same frequency without touching it starts resonating. That's how it is. Every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency mental level that calls it. When you want a result that is higher than your level of thinking, it cannot resonate to it. So your mindset must rise. Let me tell you, when it gets there, it will come in a heartbeat. Forget about the physical activities that ask themselves to manifest it in your life. That's that's little issue. But we focus on who will bless me and how it will come. That's, that's not the issue. Just settle it in your mind. You have programmed yourself truly to be successful. When you want to know the true secret behind a man's result, don't look at the physical result. Understudy the understanding of that man. You see that? You get blessed from successful people, not just by benefiting from the result of their success. Unfortunately, that's what mediocres do. They are obsessed by the result. The tie, the shoe, the watch, the car, the um, anointing, the miracles, wheelchair. No, there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the Holy Spirit so that that kind of result be produced. When you have that construction, then you are ready for victory. The price of mental transformation. Are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's results? It doesn't work that way, sir. You will never, never be able to receive results at the mental state that brought the challenge that has fed you. Let me tell you what challenges are. Challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level. The moment you are confronted with a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you. I teach the School of Ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I am there and I am real but your mental state now cannot take you there. Challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I exist, I am real. But you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding. I am passionate about God exposing my area of ignorance. It doesn't embarrass me. Some of us are so 
egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area it embarrasses us you must be flexible enough to admit that where i am is a reflection of something i do not know are we together do you believe this Apostle, I don't have friends. Everybody hates me. It's a lie. There is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality. Apostle, money comes and it disappears. Yes, there can be demonic issues, but the demons don't just come and act foolishly. They act upon a mindset that can host them. The day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence, that's the day you break free. That's why true deliverance, after casting out the demons, there must be a reconstruction of your understanding. To make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon spirits. It is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them. You are only recycling a journey of endless suffering. That's why when demons find out that a particular man of God does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance, the demons are in a hurry to leave. They mock you. Before you raise your hand, they go knowing that their access point is still there. The door is open. Are we together? Something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation. There is a way Africa thinks. We have subsistent thinking. There is a way men of God think that don't give them results. There is a way they think that they get results. Please, every time you see a man of God, a system, a businessman, whatever, commanding results, don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results. But if you really want to receive, you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding. So the Bible says this, let this mind, permit this mind, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, permit this mindset, this thinking, this construction, this set of understanding to be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And then things will respond to you the same way they responded to Jesus. Born around a manger still didn't matter. Upgraded his mind 30 years. He was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90% of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from. Listen, listen, hear this advice, never be in a rush to manifest physical results in your life. Don't be in a rush to start business. Someone met me one time and said, sir, what the way you are looking at me? I don't know whether I meant prophetically or physically. He said, what business do you think I can do? I said, none. You will fail in every business you do, no matter how simple it is. And this is the reason. It's not because you are lazy. It is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default. Sincerity is one of the seeds of greatness. So you may be sincere. It's like someone who is very sincere wants to transport you from one place to the other but cannot drive will his sincerity take you there as well meaning as that person is is not if you die is when that car will capsize don't labor to show physical results you try to buy a shoe of hundred thousand to make a statement I guarantee you, your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe. You will be surprised that you will never kick it on a wall. But in one month, the shoe will open up. Something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state. Your mind is saying it's a lie. Your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm. Something will happen. I've given you an analogy again and again. Take a poor person, take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company, put him in the director's office for two weeks. Don't tell him anything. Just put him there and say, you have unlimited access to this office. Do you know what he will do? Number one, he's going to steal. Are you seeing the mindset? He will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time. Number two, he will not clean and arrange the place. What can I get? So things the mediocre. What can I get? Not what can I give? He will sit down, watch television, drink all the juice in the fridge, snap himself, take selfies, and then try to, what can I steal? Oh, there's one carton of water. If I take five, nobody will know. That's the mediocre. That's the reason why he will remain where he is. 
in two weeks he would turn that office into his mindset but take a great man to a room that is messy cobwebs everywhere and he sits down his mindset refuses and says no this is not you Whoever has your mindset should sweep the room, and so he sweeps the room. Whoever has the mindset should clean the room. In five days, you come back and see the same room, no cobwebs. He would have bought a rock to put there. As at the time he was deciding, he didn't have money, but his mindset told him how it will come is the last. The most important thing is to plan. There is power when you set goals. This is a renewed mind. A poor man will say, I beg this Nigeria, I don't have any father anywhere and remain here. After one year, he has not been able to buy a rock. Something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are. Is that true? I look at myself and I look at the dimensions God wants to take me. And I look at many things I do not know that is responsible for my current level of results. And so I continue to search, find out. If I know what Follow Rusha Alakija knows, then I will be a billionaire in dollars. Correct? Listen, respect results. Don't trivialize results. Results are not luck, especially predictable results. Predictable results. Time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions. When you see a result that is sustained, it was based on loss. It wasn't based on magic. I can dash you one million, but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake. No, sir. It's a lie. I can lay hands on you temporarily, and you can even lay hands on someone in the wheelchair and give the person. But brothers and sisters, you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace. The Bible never said the donkey talked forever. He talked for a moment and his mouth was shut. The Bible never said the rod bordered forever. Psalm 78 verse 41, a scripture that has become a national anthem in this place. It said, but they limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. They were in the wilderness and they limited Him. Can God make a way? Can God make a way? Can God make a way? The Bible says they limited him. As mighty as God is. Brothers and sisters, we can limit him. Through our understanding, we can limit him. Someone met me one time and said, Apostle, God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a text Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself. Just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, had, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Well, have you gone to the market to find out how much anointing oil is? That's a proof of faith. It's a time that you know it will come. Faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction. Are we together? Let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith. They are fake in their expectations. Fakeness is a sign you are not sure the result will come. The Bible says, give us. He told you who to give. Number two, he says, this day, man, what our daily bread? Give us this day our daily bread. Specificity is very important in manifesting faith. So that when the result comes, you are sure that this is what I release my faith for. Is God speaking to us? When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh -uh. You finished school four years ago till now. You can't even buy a nice gym. And so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical wall to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into. And we keep, you notice that you keep rising up 
and falling rising up and falling your physique you try to fake it your mindset brings you back that's what happened to many of our loved ones I've told people why fake something that can be real you don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that to disturb you if you can take the word of god the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space continue to upgrade yourself in the name of jesus i may have gary today but i will feed nations and you study the word of god and it's constructing your mind there is he that's stirring and yet increases. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Ah. So an attachment for things is why money doesn't come. You write it in the name of Jesus. I have no attachment to things. When God brings them, money is a slave and a servant. Never to become a God and a master. I am a giver. And then you study again. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that he having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So it's God that can make all grace abound. That means I don't need to worry about how the results will happen. It is God's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest. Are we together? You begin to study. You see. The Bible says love never fails. That means if there is anything that is failing in my life, when I add love to it, I can turn the results around. So you construct your mindset. Let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform. Your environment will start fighting you. Because immediately, your friends and your environment, your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say, what are, are you the only one who is a Christian? What is all this is where we are talking about all of this in I beg man must walk and it's no story. I don't speak like that again. With all due respect, something is happening to me. Say, hey, you that have finished all that grammar and let come and stop Gary. They are trying to pull you back. Say the devil is a liar. Say it again. And they will pull you back and say, it's true. Let me go back, Gary. This coin only I think you are just talking like fools. Even God knows. Well, will I lie? I'm like that. I'm, I'm not. And you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state. While people are watching football, you buy a book, 500 naira, and you sit down. When people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money, God just opens the door, 10,000 naira, and you just say, Ah, my birthday is tomorrow, Kai. Will I die like that? Let me enjoy myself. Are we together? Your birthday clothes, 8,000. Whatever else you buy, you cook, and the money has finished. And you feel good about that day and continue suffering. Or someone can say, this is my birthday. I may not be a millionaire overnight, but let me make it the last birthday. When the, by this time, one year, I should at least be able to have options for the food I eat. We don't make that decision. We don't study. What are you doing? I'm browsing something. What, who is that? Um, somebody, I mean, very powerful, is a wonderful Christian, and he's speaking, minded of great people. They are big. I want to watch one film. It just came out. Am, am I mocking movies? No, please don't, don't misunderstand me. What I'm saying, if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development, you will never be great. I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people. They are just people who manipulate the minds of people. Ministers are very intelligent people. It takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts. I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we were coming, I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking. And I said, wow. I said, really, everybody is a public speaker. The moment you are a leader in any field, you are a public speaker. Public speaking is all about communicating thoughts. It takes intelligence, it takes psychology, it takes leadership, it takes content. Not just that God sent you and said, go to America, go to 
um, whatever and then you go and stand and say well the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now don't worry well, if you like the sleeping while I'm talking you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes you see our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion especially when you know that there is a lavish anointing of God upon your life you must have both a sound word and intellectual balance so that as you are communicating the word of God there is a, a synergy with your result anybody that listens knows that no 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 this person has paid his price I will be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results stay in the name of Jesus I receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation I buy the truth and I sell it not hallelujah one way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms that's how the Bible puts it he says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed he says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this African trado African mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the Bible says that David served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it. I'm sent to minister to all men but I always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50 if you are within the range age range of 15 to 50 you are within my generation of influence now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here i will bless you but you will be surprised that bishop oyedeko and papa adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me is that true because they grew with that generation if you're a ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be ministry for a long time if you're a ministry and every of your member is at least 60 65 i have a very sad news for you you are not going to last because um, those people are at the level of their life where they are interested in legacy don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say are you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people i foresee times when in the next 10 15 years they will have precedence in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at france has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your tongue forever i want you to believe what i'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price are we blessed change your perception change your paradigm don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is or getting a job as wonderful as that is pay the price pay the price to build your mind then your job i have said it again and again i'm not necessarily talking about money but you don't make money off business you make money off your understanding you don't become great off the physical things you do you become great off your understanding may the lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of jesus you've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great but the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves you will see it happen yes you will see it happen we may not look like it now the bible says now are we the sons of god he says and it does not yet appear 
until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce. Fill with the Holy Ghost from age two. Why? Because a healthy mindset is the head of that family. Loving God because you understand the principles. That at age 60 you look at because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the Lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace. That you will become Kula and Hefsiba, unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. And people ask you, how are you doing it? He said, I can reproduce it again and again. It was not luck. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help me. Grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding. Stop complaining about the physical results you do not see. Brothers and sisters, that should be the least of your concern. Lord, deliver me from a fake life. Are we praying? Deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there. I receive the patience. I receive the patience. I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight. I will not become anointed overnight. I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding. Lift your voice and pray. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife, exceptional husband, exceptional career person, exceptional businessman, an exceptional politician. I focus on mental transformation. I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire. Your future is somebody's experience today. And the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the word of God. But again, by following them who through faith and understanding, allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations, everything they have told you growing up, you will never be great. You are poor, you are small, you are in non-entity. You probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor. Something has told you you will never be a good wife. You will never be a good husband. It could be friends, backgrounds. I'd like you to pray and say, I cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. I decree and declare that I am well able, ten times better. My life has no limitations. My only limitation is the voice of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am limitless. Hallelujah. Listen. Don't listen to what I'm saying and think I'm just talking nonsense. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, you fail in life. Yes, you will. And you will live an angry and resentful life. Our society is full of very angry people. Do you know, one of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges, it's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in what? If you rejoice in your certificate, one day it will make you angry, the day you are not promoted. If you rejoice just in your husband alone, your wife alone, your child, your car, your business, all those things, they fluctuate. But it says rejoice in a constant factor called the Lord and again I say rejoice and your joy will never have a reason to bear when, when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing sometimes you say ah these people are lucky if you know what those people are going through half it may kill you but they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them they understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit you use it to draw from the wells of salvation it's not circumstances that the bible says the joy of the lord is your strength meaning when i lose joy i lose strength and satan understands this so he will orchestrate it i thought you said you will enter a relationship by january you even open your mouth and told people now it's november oh, my sister and you just say, hi, hey, how about God? There are many men in Koinonia now. Won't they see me? You are already responding to it. But the joy of the Lord. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. I thank you. Where is the God that brought the servant of Isaac to come and meet Rebekah? That same God will connect me. Lord, I give you praise. Before the arrival of the man, I continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue. That the day that gentleman sees me, he will never be able to sleep again. Good preparation. What do you do while waiting for your miracle? 
among many things. Praise and prepare. Praise and prepare. Is God blessing us? Yes. You will never, and I say it with all humility, you will never see me putting my hand on my chin and say, Hi, life. He said, why now? I said, Nigeria, are you not seeing what is happening? I choose to be joyful. I choose to make merry. In my world, there is absolute peace. The world you talk about is the one your mindset created. Over. In my world, there is peace and love and joy. Apostle, are you seeing what is going on in this country? I know, but I know that there is a God in heaven. He was not dethroned. He's alive. Hallelujah, he's alive. Apostle, are you hearing that terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere? Oh, I understand that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, there is a construction. I am happy. Joy is a defense. You plant here and plant hatred, and before you know it, what you used to believe, you now stop it and throw it away. Be joyful. Prophesy to your neighbor, say, Be joyful. Say to another, Remain joyful. Amen. When two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter. So when you cannot laugh and you are happy before God, something is wrong. Oh God, I'm here again. But you said, better come and answer me. What is all this thing I'm saying? Is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request? Or is it that Apostle Sam is not touching my own? What is all this? I keep writing this thing. And when the devil say, please continue. I, I beg you, continue. You frustrate Satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them. He says, what then do I do? It's a time you are not living in the flesh. Are we together? You get up in the morning and there's no food. And you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says, Pastor, Gary has finished though. They say it with sarcasm. Are, are you, do you have people like that around your life? Yes. They will say to me, please, prosperity confessor, Gary has finished. There is soup, but no Gary. I tell God there is already soup, just help us with Gary. They try to mock you, but you know mockery is a mystery. Every time, listen, every time men are mocking you, it's a sign something has left heaven. And Satan is trying to use men to stop it. Read your Bible. Every time they mocked men, when the mockery was at the apex, the result was almost arriving. When we started out in ministry, many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things. And the Lord told me, just continue to rejoice and celebrate. And hallelujah, look what he's done. And will continue to do by his grace. Make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person. Make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful. Apostle, nine o'clock my rent must be paid. My brother, anger will not pay rent. Your your annoyance will not even add to it. So you better be happy because even physically, it can make so what is making you joyful like this. And you say, I'm smiling in the midst of the storm. Is this storm what storm? And the first thing comes. Tell your loved ones to be happy. Our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress. You see somebody 20 years old, they tell you he has BP. So what are you thinking about saying my life? I'm 20, I'm not in a relationship. Like, ah, are you joking? What in the world is this? What's, what's wrong with you? Listen to our character building series. Walk on your mind. What did you watch? Which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience? But when you see somebody rejoicing, always happy. You come back from Koinonia, I'm happy. Somebody is grumbling in the car. You say, well, God bless you. You arrive home, you are happy. What will we eat? Well, they may not be food. And truly, sometimes it can be painful, but Lord, I give you all the praise. How long will I keep dancing for as long as the answer comes? Let me tell you, waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant. I would never have the privilege of having that experience. But one thing I know is that I've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child. For as soon as you travel, travel in joy. Brothers and sisters, the God who promised you will bring it to pass. So, yes. I have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God. I will hold up. If I perish, I perish. If God said it, I believe you. 
Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. God is speaking to you. Is there anything? Too hard for me to do. I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. It didn't take you one day to build that understanding. Just continue with God. Apostle, it's been three years I've been coming for Koinoni. I can't even pay my transport. Don't worry. The word of God is working. The day the miracle will come, not even your prayer will stop it. God says it's too late. When your mindset has built it down, a day will come in one month. You will see cars in Koinonia. You will be like, is it season? It's not a season. The, the, the car is being given to you now. Your colleagues are saying, my brother, won't you buy a car? Don't worry. Don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere. Just calm down. Leave the issue of loan and stay with God. Take your Okada with honor and give God praise. The day to come, it will come in a grand style. I assure you. You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope. At your level, I was worse than how you look now. So you better encourage yourself and say, if I'm at this level and I'm already smiling like this, it means when I get to a level higher than where I am, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Number four. What's the third price? is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and i add the gift of a man that's been identified developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man, the raw material potential gift. No, sir. It won't bring you before great men. The gift of a man, an ability, a potential, identified, developed. Are we together now? And then alongside excellence, when you serve your gift with excellence, the Bible says it will make room, hallelujah, and will bring you before great men. Nobody celebrates potential. We recognize potential, but we celebrate potential that has been developed. The world we live in rewards value. You must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful. Not value that you know. Your value must be needed and useful. The kingdom of God is built upon a reward system. Listen carefully. The kingdom of God is built upon a reward system. Money being only one of the rewards. Jesus is a reward for being valuable. Are we together now? Very important. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 15. It says good understanding procures favor. Good understanding gives favor. Good understanding is like a pregnant woman. When she gives birth, the name of her child is favor. It says but the way of the transgressor. A transgressor is not a sinner. The way of a transgressor is hard. Hardship has a formula. You can predict it. Good understanding gives favor, but the way of transgressors is what? You must be skillful. Nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful. You must be skillful. We train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful. The workers, everybody, you must be skillful. Oh, I can see. Wonderful. 
But will Don Muen call you because of your voice? Have you worked upon yourself? What do you know about me? The truth is that many of us, at least to an appreciable level, we have discovered areas here and there in our lives. But the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia, that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence. Everybody shout it after me, say competence. Say it again, competence. Let me tell you something I've learned about competence. Competence defies age, gender, tribal and racial um, differences and, and all of and sentiment. I have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from. I've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields. Listen, anything you are doing, if you do not plan to be a leader in that field, don't do it. Are we together? I will never commit my energy to anything that I will not be a leader in, whether it is ministry, whether it is business. You may start small, but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field. In the academia, the professor collects the highest salary. Why? Because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it. You may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker, but if you have not risen to that level of competence, you may never have the privilege of access. Make up your mind that I will be competent. Say it, I will be competent. Say it again, I must be competent. The law of value. Your value, when developed, decide who pursues you. Your value, when developed, decides who pursues you. Mahmoud teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward. A problem is an invitation for a reward. Until there is a problem that you can solve, I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary. Herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you. When you are not valuable, you will not be a friend to anybody. Write this down. Discover and develop problem solving skills. Discover and develop problem solving skills. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master. Brothers and sisters, what we do that you call ministry is solving problems. You know, I've said it again and again. Many people get angry when men of God are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people. If they believe that men of God eat the church tithes and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses, it may be true for some, but it's not so for most. Men of God become blessed because they are offering value. That the value is spiritual in context. Now I am teaching you, is that true? I'm reshaping your mind, I'm adding value to you. The system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value, whether you sell it or give it free, you are authorized to be rewarded. Are we together now? You only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life, whether financial and otherwise, and you cannot be the value equivalent. So when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates, I see the value equivalent. That's why we don't harass him. If I look at a criminal who is not offering any value, yet his bank account is fat, then I know that the equation does not balance. Before you ever criticize a blessed man, examine the value. Now, you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what he's doing is valuable enough to bring reward, but it still does not matter. Everybody say, I will be valuable. Say it again, I will be valuable. 
I will be skillful. Become a master at something, Koinonia, and wave poverty goodbye. Become a master at something. If I ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me one word, at best you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something. The concept of being multi-talented is good, but those who are masters in life are known for something. There must be a skill that sets you out. Then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you. Are we together now? I'm not only a man of God, I'm many other things, but most people know me as a man of God. And they may think that's all I am and that's all that I do. There are many other aspects to my life. But there is always a skill that opens the door. That skill that brings you to the table of greatness. Then you leverage upon that. And other gifts and talents are now supporting. Is that true? Yes. You must be valuable. Now, the oil in Nigeria and Africa... Is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's the sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we were offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our GDP necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the, those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world where you are content even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you May you be valuable. Being valuable will drive shame out of your life. I tell you this. Being valuable, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. It says, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. There is a relationship between ignorance and shame. Are we together? There is a relationship, there is a correlation between ignorance and shame. Those who are angry, insulting every blessed person, insulting those who are making things happen in society, are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings, their ability, their skill, their talent, and to invest time, resources, and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field. I've made up my mind that in everything I'm involved in, I will be flawlessly competent. It's a commitment I've made to myself. And I pray that you make that commitment tonight. Never settle. The enemy of your next level is the success of your last level. Be careful. Failure does not make people fail. It stimulates them to go high. But the moment you begin to achieve results, there is a chance that you will be complacent. I will be valuable become a master solution provider there is no mystery about wealth it's not a miracle it's not magic it's a system a reward system of the kingdom remember that i said your value on its own cannot bless you it must be developed everybody say developed there is a season of refining your value one gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk Obviously, that gentleman will not last one month. He will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going. You hear people complain. Why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away? And they think the solution is just prayer. Man of God, change my story. Yes, God can change your story. But the men of God or the men that come to your church are human beings. They respond to value. By the time you continue to give people information that are needed and useful, and they watch their lives transform, the Bible says it makes me lie down in green pastures. You cannot make them lie down, but you can make the pastures green. Then they will come and lie down. They never visit green pastures. When it is fully green, they lie down. 
information that is spiritual, information that is transforming, information that is needed and useful, well researched and intelligently communicated, backed up by the anointing of the Spirit. That's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church. Any other information outside this, let me tell something with members. Members are very funny. They can say, ah! You know, you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says, my God! And while they are doing that, you are so impressed with yourself and next Sunday he never comes again. Members for you. Are we learning? How was my preaching today? Oh! I mean, I can't even start. I mean, it was, it, was, it was strange. And instead of the man of God to be honest enough to admit that God and try and go back and trust God to help, he said, You mean it? And that's, that's the sister. This message is a, is a bestseller. And then the, mem- the person does not come. The moment somebody opens the church near you in a heartbeat, they will leave you. Because they were never loyal to you, they are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation and if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth spiritually and otherwise then there's no reason why they listen to you i've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person well, well just a dab no it takes a lot of study it takes a lot of labor research commitment i'm committed to doing it this is the key to remaining relevant are we together? You must be skillful. Write the scripture down. We're not turning for time's sake. Genesis 41. Um, okay, let's just look at two verses. Genesis 41. The whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46. That's the whole context from verse 14 to 46. But please give us 14 and 31. This was Joseph now. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Are we together? Now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to proffer a solution. And in verse 33, Now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man. Look at a politician. After he finishes marketing himself, he says, Pharaoh, it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one, but you, since you are smart, who has committed himself to being that valuable? Look for a man who is discreet and wise. And when you find such a man, when you find such a man, do what? He, he, he programmed his own promotion. When you find that man, this is the level of result that should be given to that man. Set him over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown you thee, there is none so discreet and wise. Everybody say mastery. It's leadership. This is called leadership. Pace setting, trailblazing. That no, this is not competition. This is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocres. You never see planes crashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You still don't see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say, I'm one of them. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. Um, Thou shalt immediately be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have, I have set thee this day over all the land of Egypt. Did he ask him what tribe? Did he ask him, Are you a Jew or you are this? You have solved my problem, you have reward. And Pharaoh took off his ring, the ring in his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Go ahead. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. Let's see something interesting that happened now. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man, authority through competence, shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Let's finish it. Two more verses. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name, or whatever that is, that's a very long name there. And he gave him to wife Asena. 
free wife. Getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable. This is the revelation God is giving us. Yes, you can clap. Getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable. God programmed that way. Not everybody will produce the same result, but there must be a token. A token. A sign that you are going somewhere. And Joseph went over the land of Egypt. The last verse, how old was he? And Joseph was what? This is somebody's lifetime achievement. He did it at a statue. If you got born again at 30, you are behind time. I teach on the graph of life. You can get my message. That's a sign that you need to catch up. And when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt. Your competence can give God space to lift you. Your competence can give God space to lift you. Make up your mind to be valuable. Pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be skillful. Lift your voice and pray. Plant in me a resentment for mediocrity. Plant in me a resentment for average. Being a local champion, being satisfied by little results, being celebrated by mediocres, competing myself with people who are not even doing anything. I receive grace. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus, I declare, I decree and I declare, go ahead and pray. Lord, I will rise. In business, I set myself to become a leader in that field. In the mighty name of Jesus. In my career, I will rise to a managerial level. I will not stop till I reach the apex. I will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background. If you are a northern and pray hard, pray twice. In the name of Jesus, the mediocrity that comes with my territory, I, I declare that I break to it. If I need to take certification, I set myself to personal development. If I need to upgrade myself in knowledge, I receive grace. If I need seminars and training, I receive grace. If I need to support Meet myself consciously for mentorship. I receive grace. Grace to follow those two through faith and patience. I will not waste my day again. I will turn my laptop to a university. I will turn my Android device to a university. I take advantage of the information on the internet, in ministry, in business. I find out the leaders in my field and I press to know what they do. Hallelujah. Let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you. If there is nobody following you to learn from you, you are not a leader. You claim you are a businessman. Show me those who you have raised. Because wisdom is justified by her children. Most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously. You were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored. The book of Mark says, all men seek for thee. Please, if you truly are part of this ministry, resent mediocrity. Are we together? Resent mediocrity. Doesn't matter whether you graduated with a past or graduated with whatever. You can re-engineer yourself, re-educate yourself. Then you will change your finances. Then you will change that talk, that, that, that statement they always make. They will continue to stay at you and say, Saul, kill 1,000. David, kill 10,000. Competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres. There is a realm you must rise to. Repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance. Before you take out any physical step again, go for knowledge. Number four, pray in the spirit for one minute. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your word is changing me. I receive grace. Hallelujah. The fourth price, and will be done for today. Please, I want to have everybody's attention. Because what I'm about to teach you is a very big secret. 
most of you may think you know it but i want you to listen to me with your spirit listen with your heart the price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life the price of building quality relationships relationships are advantageous connections connections relationships are advantageous connections the easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships i've taught you this i'm repeating it so that you will understand the easiest way to be blessed in life brothers and sisters is through relationship relationships are powerful relationships are irrefutable there is no champion without quality relationships relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy it. the only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to connect it that human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it i've said it again if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not working in wisdom now money is only one of many currencies relationship being the highest at the gainer second only to godliness and your spiritual connection let me tell you something of all the currencies that men used to purchase results in life physical money notes currencies is the least of them there are seven currencies i hope that by god's grace i'll teach it next year seven currencies we use to purchase results in life everything in life is bought it's just that money is not the only currency relationship is a priceless currency higher than gold higher than the dollar lenders god called abraham alone and lot who was related went with him that was the only thing lot did and he became stupendously wealthy relationships can determine the next course of your results and lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime please i want you to learn this the presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime you are one quality relationship underline quality you are one quality relationship away from your next level of results believe me on this you are one quality relationship away from the next level of your results you know all of this already my emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships to be able to guide us on principles i've noticed believers know very little about relationships this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter three verse three please write it down the bible says can two work together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot work together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives there must be similarity you must believe similar things about god about life about money about family it qualifies you to be friends second scripture very very touching scripture proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 proverbs chapter 18 and 24 it tells us that he who desires friends you must sow that seed proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest meaning that until you sow that seed there is no harvest of relationship it says a man that has friends must first show himself what friendly and trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds you don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant relationships are harvest we must sow the seeds
Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Read with me. One to read. He that walketh with the wise shall do what? But a friend of foolish people. What will he get? It didn't say foolish people don't have a future. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you are a product of your environment. He that walks with the wise shall himself be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Please write this down everyone. Relationships do not maintain themselves. Relationships do not maintain themselves. It takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships. Relationships do not maintain themselves. This is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from. Relationships do not maintain themselves. It takes commitment on the part of all, not some, all the parties involved to maintain relationships. Please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success. Relationships do not maintain themselves. Apostle, people don't like me. Show me the seeds you are sowing. The seeds of friendship. Are we together now? Apostle, nobody wants to walk this koinonia people say They say, greet one another, they don't even greet me. No, sir. How to maintain relationships? This is the crux of the teaching. How to maintain relationships. I want to give you seven keys. Every one of us, make sure you learn these keys. If you truly learn these keys, I give you a guarantee. Those outside is dark, but make sure you're writing. Those online connecting everywhere, I want to show the reason why your favor might be delayed. Number one, the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy. Write it down. Key number one. You cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy. We are going to read all the scriptures. Every scripture I'm giving we are going to read. So media please help us on that wise. I'll give you a number of scriptures. Proverbs 14 verse 30. Quickly please. Then we'll look at 27 verse 4. Proverbs 14 and verse 30. The Bible says a sound heart is the light of the flesh. Are we together? Read the B part. It says, but envy or jealousy is what? Rottenness. It has a, a disease effect to your bones. Let me tell you something. Competitive jealousy destroys you. Jealousy is like a wound. Competitive jealousy destroys you. Believers are very, very competitive people, jealous people. You bought this car, I buy it too. You bought this suit, I buy it too. If, if, you know, I'm not just saying it for Koinonia alone, but this is something I've observed. This is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide, especially in the African continent, we are obsessed with the passion to prove points. And so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition. Men of God compete with themselves and all kinds of things. There, there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective. And you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence. But the church has a plague of competitive jealousy. Members! Koinonia is quiet. Thank you, Jesus. Because that, that means that the Holy Spirit is pounding on it. This is exactly how results. I love you too much and I must teach you this. Proverbs 27 verse 4. Many of us fall sick being envious of people. Listen, very very powerful description. Look up please. It says wrath is cruel. That means it's not good. Don't do it. Anger is outrageous but compared you know, in comparison who is able to stand before envy? In other words, envy is worse than anger. Wrath is cruel. Anger is outrageous. 
but who is able to stand before any envious people never get results in their lives they live their life with bitterness and pain could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships last scripture proverbs 14 verse 30 okay we already have that we read it already proverbs 27 verse 4 we just leave those two avoid competitive jealousy say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be patient until the word of god manifests in my life i reject jealousy i cast away jealousy from my life lift your voice and pray in one minute it will sting your ego but brothers and sisters this is god speaking pray the spirit of competitive jealousy i take it away from my life please pray envious of my workers at work envious of my business contemporaries no envy is sin it's not just bad it is sin sin against yourself you depress yourself there are many people that don't sleep in the night this lady was my junior in school she's now married and i'm not married you are envious this person i was the person that that trained this person he's now a millionaire i'm no longer i'm a pastor this is my son it's all those jealousy and envy kill it now lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus i come against him satan you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships i was surprised when i was studying this i found out that a, a research was done and it was it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking backbiting and gossip so the second point is avoid gossip backbiting and evil speaking the bible calls it ill speaking statistically you can watch them the top reasons why relationships break give us titles chapter 3 verse 2 please and then proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19 avoid gossip backbiting speaking evil unfortunately and with all due respect to the body of christ for some reason the church in nigeria i don't know if it's because of our african background we are experts at gossip experts at backbiting experts at speaking evil to speak evil of no man are we there to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men to speak evil of no man it is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people there are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong are we together we speak evil of people we speak evil of our parents we speak evil of leaders pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody if it is not you every other person has a problem you'll never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for achievement is god speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity is the sign of lack of confidence in yourself is the spirit i'm sorry to say it, and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up our reading these six things does the lord hate so god hates it these six things does the lord hate seven are an abomination unto him we're reading to 19 number one a proud look 
Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devises wicked imagination. There is such a heart. Feet that be swift in running into mischief. Nineteen, a false witness that speaketh lies. And the last of them is what? He that soweth discord. It is the among men. Among who? You find them in every church and every ministry. Experts are joining the heads of nice people together. Hey Jimmy, I, I wouldn't have told you, but have, have, do you know, have you noticed that every time Koinonia comes, there's a way Pastor Alpha looks at you. I will tell you about it later. It's devilish. It's devilish. It's devilish. You are sowing seeds of discord. There are many people who were happy friends until the wrong information came in between them. There are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced. Adam and Eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice. You must be careful. Third voice is rule quality relationship. How many of you God wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and says, told you, how many ladies would have been married now? But someone who sows seeds of discord. Sorry, I, I overheard somewhere that you like this lady. Are you are you blind? I just came to advise you. Are you blind? This lady that has lived like this, she was my neighbor growing up, so it's, it's something I know. Is that how you hate your destiny? And the brother goes back. Be careful because when we pray during miracle services, we pray very wild prayers and tell God to those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress. And you must be careful that that's not you. Because the prayer will be answered anyway. Are we together? He that soweth discord. Do you know that gossip can be habitual? Meaning even if there is nothing to say, because you have trained your mind, you will always you just see somebody pass and say, ah, let me tell you something. I didn't plan to talk, but don't laugh. Almost everybody is guilty of this. So when it's time to pray, you will cry before God. First for yourself and say, Lord, I'm guilty. I am very, very guilty. Are we together? Worship team standing to worship. I you see how this guy is standing? That's the guy I'm telling you. Hey, you don't know. A guy, I saw him around that area yesterday. He likes the lady, he likes it. What is your business? For heaven's sake, what is your business? Are we together? What is your business? Gossip, backbiting, ill spoken words. You just hear that somebody is rising, you say, Who? Who is rising? No, I need to do something about you. Don't become like that. Ill spoken words. That after time, you see, every time you talk bad about people, I want you to remember that you are destroying God's creation. You must stop it. You put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying. When you tear down people and destroy them, how many people tear down men of God? You don't think about their churches. What happens to their members while you are destroying them? What happens when you are talking ill of a pastor? What happens when you are tearing him down? What happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife? Think of what happens to her reputation. It affects her leadership. Where experts are doing it. It's a habit that I trust that God will break from us. Because many of us, this is what drives friends from us. Come, Pastor Alpha. God brings your destiny helper. He holds your hand. In two weeks, in two weeks, everybody knows everything about him. Ah, I came to Apostle's house. I saw him counting dollars. Don't, don't mind that quietness. Oh, Apostle is rich. You think it's an information you are giving. And God is saying, you see, this person, you are not a candidate for my help. Carry your trouble and go away. I said, ah, but God is going to help me now. We are destroying our lives, destroying opportunities. 
How many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet? Do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves? They have it's an obsession. If there is nothing to talk about, you can even be the person to act the drama yourself. I miss my wife. I just want you to know honestly. And you see, listen, the thing about gossip and ill speaking, please listen, this is a lesson for all of us to learn. The thing about gossip is it is like lost. Whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to. Including a child. Imagine me now coming to talk, assuming Pastor Alpha has a child that is grown, but because there is an appetite, you are walking in a house and you are now talking kind. Boy, this is your father. Wow. You are poisoning the mind of the child. What do you think happens now? Are we together? We must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Please give it to us quickly. Gossip. Terrible. Backbiting. Terrible. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned. Do what to them. What is the scriptural remedy? Listen, hold on. Let me teach you something. Be careful when you partner with gossip. Because very soon, the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about. And you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor. A typical example is workers, people who work in their profession. Your boss, your superior, they come and meet you and say, this is our boss, said, so, 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 and so, and they gossip. When promotion comes, what do you think happens? You say, uh, boss, I, I just came to appreciate you and to confess something. Sir, let me be honest, I've been talking about you. You see, he has bailed himself, Abby. But, sir, this is even the milder part of the story. The worst one is, I'm about to tell you someone else who joined me. Because he's looking for promotion. And all of a sudden, a boss that says, see me by 3 o'clock, you come back and say, pack up your bags, because next week you are leaving this company. Why, sir, please leave my office. Seed of this company. Gossip is cancer. Backbiting. 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 You must avoid it like a cancer. Number three. The third way to maintain relationships, avoid offense. Avoid offense. What is offense? The ease with which you get irritated, angry, and resentful is called offense. Offense is a measure of the ease, your ease of volatility. There are people who get offended. You can just look at them and ah, it's like this your cloth. Did you iron it well? And they say, You are insulting my pedigree. What? No, no, no. There are people who are volatile. The ease with which you get irritated, angry, and resentful is called offense. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Talking about love now. It says, Love does not behave itself unseemingly. Speaketh not her own, is not easily provoked or angered. If you are truly walking in love, I don't care what your background is, you will not be easily angered. There are people who get angry very easily. Very easily. Brought out now, is they me. I'm 10 years older than you. I am. Please don't think that because me. On a very good day, would you be saying money? Easily. You see, offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself. When you judge things from a faulty perception, things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation. Offense. Refuse to be offended. Refuse to be offended. There will be occasion for offense in every relationship, from a marriage relationship, a business relationship, ministerial relationship. You must make up your mind as a choice 
that the blessings that I seek to receive from the relationships God is bringing in my life is greater than any offense. Offense destroys. Because you see, when you are offended, one of the many ways you act is speech. And every time you speak with a heart of offense, usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation. You will talk in the flesh. You can make it means that you cannot withdraw again. Many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous, they would have regained it. Many people have lost business opportunities because of that. Offense is an advice, it's an encouragement. The Bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of this is that many shall be offended. Let me tell you, you are not a true human being. If you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense. Especially if you are a leader. People do things that should get me offended every day. I do things that should get people offended every day. An example is what I'm teaching now. Are we together now? There are things that get people offended. You must make up your mind that I will not be offended. How many men of God get offended and they can reach? They get offended at home. They come and climb the stage. And you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children. The kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family. So you know that this is a this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the book. Offense makes you small. Offense makes you cheap. Offense reduces your worth. Let me tell you something about offense. Most of those who offend you, or they know they offended you. The goal is that their joy is in your reaction. Most of those who offend, offend intentionally. But when you grow above it, you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living. After this service now, on your way home, an angry driver, an angry man, something will happen that will offend you. But you must make up your mind and say, Satan, you are a liar. I already see your hand. I will not be offended. Say in the name of Jesus, I reject offense. Is God speaking to us? Number four, how do we maintain relationships? Practice forgiveness. Practice forgiveness. Mark chapter 11 verse 25. Then Ephesians 4 32. Please give it to us. Mark 11 25. Practice forgiveness. I don't know one relationship, including the one of you and God, that can thrive without forgiveness. It's not God you are forgiving. God is forgiving you all the time. Because there are people who really are angry with God. Okay, I forgive you, God. Let's get back into the relationship. And when ye stand praying, most prayer warriors miss this. Let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives. It's not all about demons. And when ye stand praying, what is the rule? Forgive. Command. If ye have fought against any, that your Father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. It's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts. Some of us have physical books. Physical books like police report where you write this sister Jane, embarrassment, Sam laughing at me, Pastor Alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching, and you write everything. Protocol department, their own star, 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 they offended me. Ushers, I was falling before everybody, and they were watching me. I injured myself, and you write it down. Then you leave everything and say, Father, don't you know that I'm human? And God says, really? It's like a small child that begs you for something. Then you give him and say, give up and he refuses. That's exactly what we do. You can never live in this life without forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is giving. Forgiveness is giving. It is giving pardon and mercy. Forgiveness. A disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a is dimension of giving. If you are not a forgiver, you are not a giver. Mm. 
not forgiving is one way of manifesting greed. It's not just refusing sin. Forgiveness. But let me balance very quickly. You don't forgive just to make peace. Forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness. But the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward. Because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it. Let me be very honest and let me balance. Forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance, a willingness to turn away. Forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance. It is useful to you. Let me show you what offense does. Um, can I use someone? Stand, please come. Watch this. This is what offense does. I want to move forward, but I think Sam is standing my way. And so I'm trying to push him. Will I move forward holding him? I'm trying to hold Sam. I can't move forward myself. This is what forgiveness is. He can be there, not even deserving it. But I release him so that I can move forward. I can leave him and his trouble there. If he accepts that he's wrong and turns, then we make peace and we can work together. If he refuses, I still give so that I can move forward. Let me tell you, the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended. The person who was offended is the one who is most wounded. It is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset. So your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive. As a leader, people will offend you every day. People will do wrong things every day. You must forgive. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I receive grace to forgive. Say, I let go everyone I'm holding in my hands. Holding people. Hold them in your heart. I will never forgive my mother except I have said my own. And you can never receive blessing. I will never forgive my father for what my father has done. If I have a knife, I will kill him by myself and say, Daddy, die. I'm the one killing you. I will never forgive that person who raped me when I was four years old. I will never forgive that, uh, what they call it now, that brother who went out with me and broke and scattered my heart. Please forgive so that you can move forward. Forgive so that you can move forward. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of holding people. I release right now. I let go that boss in the name of Jesus. I release my husband. I release my wife. I release my co-worker. I release my business partner. I release the man of God. I release my head of department. I release my escorts. I release the members in my department. I release Joshua Selman. Make sure you pray. I release everyone who has offended me. Because I want to move forward. I want to move forward. Practice forgiveness. Hallelujah. It says, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgave us. Very quickly, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Okay, Ephesians 4, verse 32 is there. And then give us Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Luke 6, 37. Let's hurry up. Luke 6, 37. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. It says, Judge not. And ye shall not be judged. In other words, every time you judge people, you are scheduling seasons for yourself. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Make sure you practice this. Make sure you practice this. Number five, very quickly. How do I make quality relationships? Be tolerant. Be tolerant. Forgiveness is different from tolerance. Forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it. Tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change. You have to incorporate it as part of that person's living. 
there are people i wish that would tell you everybody around you will change there are people who will not change so you switch from forgiveness to tolerance you accommodate that limitation in their life factor it and build a system around it is god speaking to us yes i have many friends all kinds of friends and just like me they are very funny people everybody has all kinds of attributes the same way i am to them too but it takes tolerance there are some things that in me unfortunately may not change tolerance you don't you claim i like everybody around me to talk i say i don't talk you don't need forgiveness what do you need or you you talk too much i just ask you a question where is where is uh, my trouser? Is there, uh, is the other one, I didn't ask you about what happened. Where is my trouser? Please. Tolerance. Your destiny helper may be a talkative. If you are tolerant to the talkativeness, then you receive the breakthrough. Everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you. If everybody was like me, the world would be a terrible place. You would think the world would be a nice place. No. You don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life. This world will be a sad place. You will only be studying and reading and sleeping. What a world. I am so happy for people who are not me. They add flavor. I benefit from the joy of them not being me. You must have a high degree of tolerance. Colossians chapter 3. Please help us. 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 3. It's called forbearance. You must tolerate people. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave, so also do ye. Forbearing one another. You have business partners, you need forbearance. Are we together? You are in your office working, you need forbearance. In a ministry like this, you need forbearance. Everybody cannot be you, brothers and sisters. Learn this. Oh God, change them. Wonderful prayer. But they have their will. If they don't change, does that mean you will not move forward? Tolerance. Number six. The sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship. You must be a contributor. There are parasitic relationships. Relationships are meant for mutual benefit. Maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution. I cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life. No. It remains my friend. He contributes greatly in my life. I contribute greatly in his life. So there is a basis for continuity. Are we together now? If you are not valuable to a relationship, that relationship lifespan is very small. It will never. Please hear this. This is true for marriage, it is true for business, it is true for ministry. There are many people who complain and say, Joshua Selman doesn't want to be my friend, doesn't want to be this. And I say, no, 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 I want to be your friend. It's just that I am passionate about value. Be a contributor. Money is not the only thing to contribute. Love, kindness, godliness. Are we together now? There are so many things to bring into a relationship. Not everybody is looking for money in a relationship. There are people who have conquered that friend. They need love. They need value. They need understanding. They need help. You must learn this. If you want a guy to come into your life, what value are you going to bring? As a guy, what value are you going to bring? Even the church and Christ, truly speaking, doesn't need anything from us. But because of his love, he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something. That's why when we worship and praise Him, we are we, 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 not necessarily adding anything to Him, but He has limited Himself that way so that He can give us room for expression. 
relationships must be mutually beneficial. If there are five people in a business and only two are running that business, they are the two who will be the closest of friends. The rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry. Don't be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value. Please, I want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much. The reason why even in the house of God, it's true that we love everybody unconditionally, but we are not committed to everybody at the same level. It is according to contribution. Say Amen. You must be a contributor. If you are helping me spiritually, you will be close to me. If you are helping me financially, you will be close to me. If you are helping me in terms of the love for God, if you are helping me fulfill my assignment, you will be close to me. If you are not doing any of this, I love you, but you can't expect to be close to me. The same way, if I'm not contributing meaningfully to your life, you love me, but I can't be close to you. Relationships are based on contributions. I want you to learn this. Wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery. Brothers and sisters, there must be a commitment. No matter how little it is, it may be prayer, it may be love, it may be rest. Sister, you may not be educated, but you can bring love, you can bring patience. Are we together? Yes. You are the one that when the guy is getting sad, say, no, calm down. It may not be so. But the guy that said, no, 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 my dear, calm down. I know she offended you, but it is. There has to be a contribution. You walk with the Holy Spirit, you are rebellious, you are disobedient, you don't pray, no secret place, and you say, Lord, why are you not close to me? And he says, what is all this? Are you not hearing what the apostle is saying? You have to be the mutual contribution. Give me time, I give you more of myself. become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what I will get. In as much as I have spoken about value, brothers and sisters, if the only basis for relating people is what you will get, you are a selfish personality, whether as a husband, as a wife, as a man of God, as a member, as a worker, as a career person, as a business person. It is not always about what you will get. It is about who you are. Are we together? My life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me. No. While we were yet sinners, unable to contribute anything, induced is in Christ died for us. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12. Please quickly. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12. Hatred stirred up strife, but love covers what? Let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, it is one proof that the friend you have, whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship, will last. When you truly love somebody, you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses. It will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away. If you can throw people easily, it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them. Love can cover a multitude of sins. I see people in relationships, not love really, all kinds of relationships, and the ease with which they get offended. No, sir. If five people come into your life, not love relationship now necessarily, five people come into your life, none of them can stand to it. The problem is you, not them. Are we together? Hatred, stereot of strife, but love covereth. How many sins? That means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love. The secret to peace, all kinds. John 13, 35. John 13, 35. Then give us 1 John 4, 20. 1 John 4, 20. John 13, 35. John 13, verse 35.
by this shall how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not if you pray in tongues not if you have a christian name if you have love not for god love for one another loving god is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love because it says that if you love god that you do not see or you don't love your neighbor that you see how can you claim you love god that you see listen brothers and sisters this issue of loving one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in i, I have told myself i cannot hate anybody in the house of god no impossible impossible truly speaking i'm not just saying it i live a very peaceful life because why are you angry i've been delivered i live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another do you love people or do you use people you can use people you can use a relationship you can use a wife you can use a husband you can use a boss you can use employees pastors you can use members you can use workers the workers in this ministry know with all humility that i love them with all my heart i love the leaders they know it i'm lavish about it i love them with all my heart how could i ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart this is why some of us never get the anointing this is why many of us never command results our hearts are full of hatred there is always one bad story to say first john 4 verse 20 and then we round up first john 4 verse 20 god has spoken to us tonight if a man say even if his name is joshua selman if joshua selman says i love god like many christians say and hated his brother he didn't say hated he didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did he just said if he hated his brother please read on if you're a christian what is he he didn't say he's an angry person and God understands that person is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God that he has not seen? Church, we must not only love Jesus, we must love ourselves. More pastors will experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving god and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why i honor the lord for the ministers around him i mean reverend dr Tenley is here god bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time i see them come visit like this i am very blessed love there are times i pick up my phone and i just send all my pastor friends text messages and i just tell them how are you how is the work the lord bless you the lord honor you there are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you would never do it as have you ever done it to me. You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you have sown that seed, the friend you used to know that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you. But when you had privilege, the number he had then that you had, you did not invest in it. And now he has changed his life. Only those who bless him have the new life. You are not part of them. And you are angry and grumbly and say, all these pastors. I remember when God started helping me, a lot of people were offended and said, what is all this thing? Eh? I tried to call a pastor. You cannot call. You call you the protocol. He doesn't know me. And I said, you can imagine. Two years, you have never asked whether God, whether Koinonia people are eating. Whether, how did you collect offering? Is God faithful? Are there demons attacking you? Can I pray? You didn't send any text. And then you just hear that God is faithful. And you want a prayer request and just call and demand. No, it's not done that way. It's an investment. You don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it. There are people who don't honor anybody. They don't recognize anybody. They don't care. Just call and say, look. I have Bishop Oedipo's number still. Bishop David Oedipo, let me call. And you call, they see all these organ men of God. I will not pay if I am him. No, sir. It's not because I hate you. They are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them. Please, don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit. A little prayer. I'm not talking of money. 
a little prayer. Man of God, how are you, sir? Just to find out. Mommy, how are you? Daddy, how are you? Pastor, how are you? It's been three years we've not seen. I hope God is doing well. God bless you and increase you. They are not in it. Even if they don't have time to reply, they are not in it. The day they see that number, there are many numbers I don't have saved, but if I see them, I know. I know that this person cares a lot about the ministry. How is Koinonia? Some people are very sarcastic. Greetings here. My name is this. These are my problems. You just need to bless you. And I said, what? Just like that? There are people who only call when they need help. Sir, um, just to greet you. My mother has come again, honestly. Uh, my father has come again. Oh, my sister, remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry, was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. I met you and you are reminding me today. You must invest in relationships. You must love Brothers and sisters, I stand by the integrity of God's word and I tell you this, if you practice these things before last koinonia, it would have changed your life. There are some of you, this is what you need. This is the revelation you need to enter the next level. It's not like the job cannot come. There are many people now that admission will start. You're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people. Sir, I remember it's me that sent you Stevie and said, See, because I'm coming for Koinonia and you are seeing me like that. You've never done anything, you've never sent it to Viper Life and all of them. Sir, the, I just to let you know that uh, by God's grace, I'll be finished it now. You promised me 300 level that you'll give me money for, for projects. You do follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call, write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you. Because when a man loves you, everything he has loves you too. If a millionaire loves you, his money loves you too. An anointed man loves you, his anointing will love you. There are anointings that reject people. Yes. That's why people don't receive. We are going to pray and we are going to cry to the Lord and say, Lord, the answer to my challenge will have to be one of these five. Either I have not paid the price knowing you, or I have not genuinely submitted to authority. I have not committed myself to mental transformation. I have not paid the price to be skillful and valuable or I have not paid the price to build and maintain quality relationships. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Thank the Lord for the word you've heard tonight. Lift your voice and begin to bless Him. Extraordinary results. Results that defy limitation. These are the systems of the kingdom we engage in. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I like us to pray. I've listed these areas. You know the areas where you honestly need to flog it out with God. In the next one minute, please swallow your pride and cry to God and say, I obtain mercy. I obtain mercy. Lord, I have not paid the price to know you. I am lazy spiritually and otherwise. I have not committed myself to pressing into the things of God. There's too much distraction in my life and I make up my mind that I will change from today. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've not committed myself to transiting mentally. I'm still carrying age-old ideas that are destroying me, ideas that are responsible for my pain, ideas that are responsible for the misery in my life. I'm a product of my mindset. I have by a wrong mindset driven good people in my life, driven good opportunities in my life. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. No more laziness. From tonight, I commit myself to personal development. Lord, I receive grace to be skillful. 
I receive grace to be skillful. I receive grace to be skillful. Lord, I receive grace to be excellent, grace to be competent, grace to be excellent, grace to be competent, grace to be excellent, grace to be competent. Finally, pray for relationships. Lord, all the areas that you have touched tonight, I receive grace. I declare that I'm free. The Bible says, He who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. I declare that I'm free from offense. I'm free from bitterness. I'm free from gossiping, backbiting, ill spoken words against people. I only seek the good of another. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, I let go every offense. I make up my mind that I'm pressing to the place of destiny. And in the name of Jesus, no power of hell will stop me. Hallelujah. One last prayer for you. Father, every dimension of result I should have entered, that lack of observing these truths have kept me. I declare that your mercy reopens that door for me. Go ahead, lift your voice and pray. I decree and I declare the mercy of God again. I decree and declare the mercy of God again. I decree and declare the mercy of God again. Are you praying? I decree and declare relationships that I've lost because I did not see understanding. I decree and declare by the mercy of God they are reopened. Business opportunities, financial opportunities, ministerial connections, strategic relationships, connections that would have lifted me, bailed me out of trouble, stop shame from my life. Hallelujah. Lord, I stand before your people and we declare connecting with all those who are following from the nations of the earth. And Lord, we declare that we are ready to put these truths to work. In the name of Jesus, we lay our pride tonight. We humble ourselves before you, the Lord of glory. You have brought your word to lift us. The Bible says he sends forth his word. We receive the sent word into our hearts. We commit ourselves to applying the changes that are required. And Lord, we declare that your grace and your mercy will back us up. Let there be results in our lives. We decree and declare that between now and the end of this year, let our lives command strange results. In the name of Jesus Christ, all of the limitations in our lives that grant Satan and demon spirits access to live and destroy us, we declare by the blood of Jesus that they are closed and closed forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Everyone, please keep standing. We are here tonight and um, whilst you were hearing me speak, the Holy Spirit was speaking to you and saying that you need to make your ways right. Or especially you are here and you have discovered that offense is eating you up. It has killed your spiritual life. You literally backslid just because of offense and bitterness and hatred and you are finding it difficult to let go. You are here, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to make up your life, you want to take away these things and say, Lord, I need to start afresh. If you are here inside, outside, any of the overflows, please, I want you to make your way very quickly. We have one minute for you. Wherever you are, make your way to the front. Thank you, Jesus. Someone is responding to this call. God bless you. Someone is responding to this call. Quickly, please, if you are coming, make way to Jesus. Go ahead, make your way. Lord, I want to make it right with you tonight. I can't live my life like this. I came for koinonia. I may deceive others, but I cannot deceive myself. Lord, I'm ready to lay everything down. Everything down. Go ahead. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're still coming outside. Please double up and come. Double up and come. Those online, connect with us wherever you are. And pray the prayer as I lead God's people to pray. Please come, direct them. Direct them. God bless you. I see people coming. Make your way to the front very quickly. Hallelujah. Please come quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Thank you. Most of you. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.